You know, my dad told me that life is like a pinball machine. Sometimes you tilt, sometimes you go out, and sometimes, like me, you get an extra ball. Once again, welcome back to the Top 10 Movie top 10. Podcast with Mike and Molly. Today's topic is going to be the Top 10 Movies I'd Love to Be a Character in. And Mike, you are the one who actually came up with this idea. What was your, what were you thinking behind it when you came up with it? Uh, the main reason was because we never get to do a list that I want. No, I'm kidding. I'm <laughs> kidding. No, no, no. That's not true. That's not true. I think you um, came up with the last two. I, yeah, least. well, because normally, you know, it's so heavy-headed on yours, and that's not a slight against you. It's just I'm not good at coming up with I threw a lists. lot of and ammunition your and you, way. I mean, you do. I do a lot of it. So. But it's like, I need to start you, pulling my choice. own weight here and trying to come up oh, with some I good like lists. It. And I think, you know, the one we did previously, which was the top 10 most anticipated of the year. Yeah. I don't think that was a good list. Easy, and then easy this one. one so this is something I think I've talked about just in conversation with other people. Like, okay. you know, what what are your favorite movies? You know, would you like to be, what movie would you like to be a part of? What character and why? And so I figured this could be an interesting conversation piece, you know, for us to discuss. And that's kind of how it came about. Yeah, when you first introduced the movie to me, the idea to me, I instantly said yes, but then kind of had a panic attack afterwards because I thought, that's okay. I'm doing my job then. Doing well, my job. I, what actual movie would I want to be a character in or in that atmosphere? And a lot of them were like, no. I don't want to be part of an alien attack. Uh, I don't necessarily want to be in any kind of military movie. I don't want to be in John Wick or some kind of an assassin-laden movie. Like, uh, I don't necessarily want to be in a superhero movie, particularly, with, you know, unless I am one of the superheroes, but I probably wouldn't want to be in that environment as just a person. So it just it put me in a weird mindset that I didn't know what I would be, want to be in. Then I, a couple of ideas came instantly to me, and then I just kind of built off them. So Well, some, uh, some of the choices I have on my list will maybe kind of go to what you're saying, but I, I can justify why I chose said character. And also to preface, we did kind of say, with this, we can come up with a fictional character, like a separate character, sure. like a random, or it could be somebody that's actually Very in specific. said movie. Yeah, yeah. So it's dealer's choice. And and that, and that helped open up things for mm-hmm. like uh, why I would be in the movie and, and, and what movie I would be in. So uh, if you don't mind, I'll start. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, now, if we have any of the same on this list, then there's something wrong. Oh, well, maybe because there's a plethora of movies for us to choose from between our brains. Yeah. There's no way we should have the same anything. Well, we on this list. are friends, and we have constantly been talking movies for five years. So I wouldn't be surprised if some of our thought processes aligned at this point. Okay, we'll see. We'll see. All right, my movie. Once again, uh, I want to say before we start, uh, yeah. Stephen does have uh, a whole Seven pages thesis of notes, worth of paper over here. Like I said, this is mostly <clears throat> uh, just filler. Work. All right, let's go. Let's see what we got. Okay, so uh, top ten movies I love to be a character in, and this is one of the first ones that I thought of, and maybe the best one. I would love to be the main character in Groundhog Day, 1993 movie with starring Bill Murray, Andy McDowell, and Chris Elliott. So you want to be Bill Murray? Directed by Harold Ramis, yes. And, and so look, you want to die a million times. Okay, got well, it. Let's, first of all, some people might not have seen this movie, so let me give a quick little what it is. Uh, it's just synopsis. Well, uh, yeah. Um, so basically, a very cynical tele- television weatherman finds himself reliving the same day over and over again in the little small town of Poxitani as he's doing a uh, filming a report about their annual Groundhog Day festivities. Um, and his predicament drives him to distraction until he sees a way of turning the situation around to his advantage. So basically... A guy by the name of Phil Connors, played by Bill Murray, is forced to live the same day over and over again. No matter what he does at the end of the day, no matter how he tries to get out of it, he is forced to live that day repeatedly. See what you just did there? See what you just did right there? See, but for a quick second, listeners, I'm going to produce you real quick. Mm. So you gave us the synopsis, which I guess came from the internet. Yeah. But then you made it your own. Yeah. And I like... Your synopsis. <laughs> I want to hear more of Steven's synopsis. All right, movie. I'll do that. I'll do that. Um, one of the biggest mysteries of this movie, if you haven't seen it, is exactly how much time has passed that he's spent in this one day. And in the movie commentary, the director, Harold Ramis, said 
it was 10,000 years. Now, later, he changed that answer to 10 years. But I like the 10,000 years better, so I'm going to go with the 10,000 years thought process in this little experiment that we're doing. But so, what's, why would you want to live? Here's why. So imagine if you had to live one day for 10,000 years. It, you would definitely go insane at certain parts of it, right? Because everything would be the same. It's always the same. No matter what you do, no matter what you do, it's always the same. And he gets to this point in the movie where he tries to unalive himself a few times in this movie to get out of this situation. Hold on, did you really just say unalive? Yes. So you're, you've are you conformed to social media uh, No, it's right? just, no, it's just a, a nicer way to say it and maybe not as triggering as the other word. So, okay. um, but imagine what you could learn in 10,000 years, right? You could learn art, medicine, science, culinary. Imagine discovering the cure of cancer in those 10,000 years. Discovering a new method of space travel, um, learning how to paint like a master, uh, cooking the perfect meals, right? 10,000 years of learning. Entertainment-wise, you'd watch literally everything that you had available to you. And if you had the internet, everything in the world would be at your fingertips. I see what you're doing. You're taking some liberties with this. All right. You watch every movie. 10,000 years, dude. To no, waste. But, but here's the Not thing. Not necessarily waste. Yeah, but if you could only live the same day over, the same day. Yeah. What if, I mean, what year is it? What year is the same day? We don't know, right? So maybe you don't have access to the internet depending on the year you choose. True. I am assuming it's the year that I want it to be in, okay. this, in this scenario. So Thank God the AC just so, came on in here, by the way. I was yeah. burning up. So it would be, it would be the, 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 a day in your time, and I'm assuming the internet's there. Just because it's And then day. I have an addendum to that. But let me, finish my, let me finish my why, and then you give me the addendum. Okay, all right. Go ahead. So, Go ahead. Entertainment-wise, like yeah, I said, you could literally watch everything, mm -hmm. right? You can binge every television show. You can see every film. You can read every book. You'd probably want to because you just need the change, right? Because there's only so far you could travel in 24 hours. So, but you would be right back to wherever your origins were. So, but you could learn. You could also do things like learn every language. You could learn how to play every musical instrument. Like 10,000 years gives you time to learn everything. And by the time that you got out of that cycle, presumably you got out of that cycle, you would be the most learned, probably intelligent person on the planet. And then if you did discover the cure of cancer or, or something as big as that while in those 10,000 years, you could actually now use that knowledge to help the world. It, you know, because when you're in the loop, you can't. But you could, you know, basically really change the world if you had 10,000 years of knowledge and the want to uh, in your in your back pocket. So that's why I would want to do be a character in Groundhog Day and be that character because at the end of it, you haven't aged, presumably. You've, ten, you've lived 10,000 years, but you haven't aged. All, you know, and everything froze for you. Basically, time is frozen for you. No one who doesn't die on that day doesn't die in your life. So if your parents are still alive, they'll be alive for 10,000 years with you. They will remember the differences from day to day, but they'll be there. That's what makes it un the, the dog will be appealing. there. The dog will always be there. The cat will always be there for yeah. 10,000 years. I know I know. There are certainly there's super downsides to it. You're going to get depressed. You're going to get, you know. You can't share that with anybody. Hey, remember when we lived 10,000 years? No, yeah. I don't. Only you, you did that. Right. There's not, there's not a cost to be paid. There's definitely a cost to it. But I think the benefits of it, it's, remember now, it's pausing your life. It's not negating the life. You're just in a pause state for 10,000 years. And then once it unpauses you, you live the rest of your life as you normally would, but you would live it with 10,000 years of knowledge. I got a question. But go. Harold Ramis changed it from 10,000 to one year, right? 10 years. 10 years? If it was only 10 years, would you still do it? Or would you want the 10,000? No, I thought I would still do it. Okay. Because 10 years is better, to, basically you're saying, would you like 10 years of extra life? Uh, yeah, I'll take 10 years. People are exercising just to get that right now. People are taking pills to try and extend their life for a year. I don't know, yeah. man. I think it's something cool about aging. You don't think something no, cool about aging? No, you still age, but it's but just paused. That just day paused. you don't, though. Remember, you're, you're basically, so however old you are today, we're not going to reveal on camera or on air, but oh, however old you are today, if you decide yeah. we live today over for 10 years, yeah. you're that for 10 years. You don't age. Not physically and not, you know, in, internally at all. Right. Say the same, right? Yeah. But isn't there something beautiful about 
actually aging? Yeah, you will. It's just at the it's just at the at the end of this pause. So you still get to experience that, but you just do it at the end of the pause. But you but in between that pause or in that pause, you can learn everything. I think I, I'm not not to step on your choice. I think I'd rather go with click, because you got the remote. You can go forward backward. Yeah, I thought it could only go forward. Oh, so. you may be right. I haven't seen it in a while. If you, you go backward, then yeah, I'll take that all day. But it's it's because he's like. I'm just gonna skip 10 years. And he's like, oh no, my kids are grown. Right. See, so he missed all that. Okay, so back to your actual choice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, have you ever thought about this for real? I mean, for this experiment. <laughs> oh, for just for this. Okay, so I didn't know maybe you have actually thought about this like late at night one night. You're like, what would I do if I can live the same day for 10 years? I think years? when you're watching that movie, and it's one of my favorite movies, so I've seen it multiple times, he certainly, certainly asked so yourself. Give me a couple of things off the list that you would do if you could live the same day over 10 years. Yeah, I think. I'm robbing a bank. Sorry, I'm robbing a bank. Sure, yeah, I mean, that's in the movie. Can't you, can't you can stash For, the money and then wait when you actually get out of the time loop, it's there? So that's not fun. Oh, wait, maybe, maybe it is, but you have to know the day that you're leaving the loop. You don't know the day you're leaving the loop. So you'd have to know the exact day you're leaving the loop in order to do that. And I think whatever's controlling that loop, mm -hmm. in my mind, it's God, but it, uh, they never say what it is. That's true. That God allow you to like, all right, you robbed a bank, now you can get out of this loop. And it seems like the reason he's putting the loop is to make him a better person. It's, to, it's a lesson, to teach you a lesson. And, that, and that's, that's the premise. And that, 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 That's not the premise of the movie necessarily because it's not stated as obvious as that. It just feels like that to me. Mm -hmm. That's how I interpret it. Then it probably only release you once you become that person that you were supposed to be and you weren't. So if we go, if we just follow the movie's rules, mm -hmm. can I learn my lesson that gets me out of the loop and mm -hmm. also rob the bank in the same day? And that, and then wake up the next day. So it's the second, say instead of the first. And I still have the money, but I learned my lesson. <laughs> you just want this money. <laughs> I just want the money. Let me tell you what. If you were in a loop for ten years, mm -hmm. ten thousand years, I would. I, I would more so the ten thousand years. Let's say because that's the premise I thought about this. You'd have have acquired the knowledge of probably what you need to make that money that you would have robbed anyway oh, in a very right. quick amount. Of time. You're right. You come up with the cure of cancer. If you're charging for it, it would be invaluable. Uh, if you could paint like uh, the, the greatest painter alive, you would sell one painting and probably make enough to live on True. for the rest of your life. So what you're saying is you wouldn't have to steal it because you would just you have to steal figure it. out a way to actually earn because it. Because your skills would allow you to make that mm -hmm. kind of money almost instantly. Okay. It's not as fun, but you're right. <laughs> if I can just go and oh, forget, I'm not going to... And, you know, incriminating myself on air. Let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> no, no. Look, any type of debauchery, any type of... You would get that out of your system at some point mm -hmm. and have done it and been there and done that because you've just been bored. Right. And you're like, all right, let me try. Let me try robbing a bank mm -hmm. or robbing this store because I want to feel, know what it feels like to do that because I know there's no consequences at the end of the day. I may have to spend the night in jail, but in the morning, I'm going to be back in my normal bed, so... Then you talked about watching like every TV show and movie that's ever been made. Ever what? been made. I'd be a fan, I'd be a, a, not only a fan of horror films, yeah. but I would be a connoisseur. Yeah, you would cease to be afraid after a certain point too. You'd be like, oh, I'm gonna wake up tomorrow anyway. Well, you wouldn't know though, right? That's the point. Is you, so technically you couldn't watch every movie and TV show because you wouldn't remember that you did this already. What if you watched the same TV show multiple days in a row? And you didn't realize oh, yeah. Well, that's not the premise of the movie because the movie, he retained he, all he of it. He does that. remember, you're right, okay. So but if you it erases, if watching? you if you if let's say what you're saying is true, that your memory gets erased at the end of the night, you wouldn't know that you were living the same day. You're anymore. right. You're so right. Okay. We so could be doing that right now today. We've done this ten thousand times. True. So let's just stick to the rules again, Mike. Come yeah, on, yeah. pay attention. So no, you talk about outside the box. It's fine. If you would, would you still? You probably wouldn't, or anybody probably wouldn't watch everything that's out. Would you? It's because yes. you have ten thousand years to do it, I, or read every book, or you know. Yeah, because you've read the one that you like a hundred times. And but it if, something it's, if it's not like if it's not your thing, you still would do it just because. Well, I, I got this time. What else are you gonna do? Uh, I guess that's true. You've seen every sunset. You've dated everyone in the town. You've killed everyone. Whatever, <laughs> whatever debauchery you've done that you know that you're gonna have a it's consequence just... for. And by the end of it, you're like, okay, I'm gonna read this book I've never read before, mm -hmm. just because I don't because it's the one thing. And I don't know what's going to happen in it. And I know what happens everywhere else. Like in the movie, 
He knows everybody's actions in the entire town. Mm -hmm. He knows when things are going to, people are going to fall out of trees and drop a glass and, and, and their tires are going to go flat. He's there with a tire to instantly fix it for them. He knows everything because he's been there so long. He even calls himself a God, not the God, mm -hmm. but a God mm -hmm. in the movie because he knows everything. So you get to a point where you know everything that you can know outside of that book. That book is going to be like, the, it's going to seem to you like it's the, the most hype movie in all of history. And it's about uh, prenatal baby care. And you're just like, <laughs> I don't have anything else. But I know how to deliver a baby now. Damn. Yeah. So you would be full of so much useless knowledge, but also a lot of useful knowledge. Dude, you win every trivia night. You, yeah. you, know, you could be your own doctor. You could diagnose yourself and other people. But to you think, you, once you get out of the time loop, you realize I had to live the same day for 10,000 years to figure it out. I think a little bit, I would be a little bit depressed after. I think I would. I, I don't, you know, yeah. 10,000 years. If we're going by that premise, oh, for, for sure. Uh, but there's going to be, there's a sweetness to it too because nothing in your life ever changes. You know? The people that are there are there. What if your life becomes so mundane after the 10,000 years? I've lived everyone's lifetime on the planet and now i got to do it for real. I think the moment that that loop changes, it's going to be like breathing your first breath as a baby. Like, it's going to be so... The littlest things are going to be so different that it's so exciting. And eventually you get back into your normal cycle, but at least for the first few months or mm -hmm. weeks or days, everything's going to be to seem like a miracle. It'd I think be you'd like, be so appreciative for any day, every change. It'd be like being in jail. Anything. You're in jail for yep. whatever, and then you get out on parole. The first few months are great because everything's brand new. But after a while, you're like, man, I, this is it's almost too different. Like. To, now that no, every day is going to be something completely different, I'm not used to that anymore. I've spent a genie's lifetime doing things my way. Now I have to kind of succumb and adhere to other people's way of doing things because now I'm back in reality. I think you're coming around to my idea of this. It's actually pretty good. <laughs> All right, let me stop that. I don't want to come around to your idea. This is pretty good. It is. It's a good one. I think it is. <laughs> You tricked me, man. You tricked me. No, it's just a good one. That's, that's all it is. It's just a good a good idea because there are sacrifices now. You're gonna to have to you're gonna to have to relive some things and probably do some things. You're gonna get depressed probably deeper than you've ever gone or ever will go. But no matter what you do, and the bigger depression part, no matter what you do, mm -hmm. doesn't matter at the end right. of the day. That's but the things doesn't matter. Let me rephrase that. It doesn't matter outside of you. Right. But inside of you, if by the rules of this movie, you keep retain everything. It it is it's going to university for ten thousand years. You're gonna go through some things that nobody will ever be able to relate to ever, and that's gonna be the hardest part to live in reality with. Is yeah, yeah, you can't gonna, yeah. Well, but, but even in the movie itself, he's able to describe his situation, and it updates with him. So. Let's say this. He goes for the great example is the the piano teacher. Mm -hmm. He goes to visit the piano teacher. He says, "I've never tried piano before." She said, "Well, I've got a student right now. You know, I can't do it right now." And he's like, "Here's ten thousand dollars." He's like, "All right, come in. You can do it right now." And he plays his first piano lesson. He comes back the second day. He says, "I've, I've, you know, I know a little bit of piano, not much." Third day, fourth day, and then by the you know first year, he's like. I've, I'm pretty versed at piano, but I still want a, a lesson. So, mm -hmm. and I'm working on this. And he just updated it every day, updated it every day. Right. And then at one point, he's like, I've been playing piano for like 20 years. I'm pretty good. I want to learn this part. Until you until you exceed her. Mm -hmm. And you're better than her. And you just stop going to her and, and then find someone better or learn on the internet or you're done with piano and pick something else up, trombone or... Yeah, that's true. But, I mean, you'd be playing the piccolo by the end of it. Sure. Be, be like a piccolo master. But there isn't anything that you've never seen before, you know. It's going to get to that. But there isn't an instrument that you can't play. There isn't a disease that you don't know about. You know, there isn't a doctor. You'd be every doctor. You'd be a chiropractor. You'd be a, a pediatrician. You'd be everything, you know, if you wanted to be. Mm -hmm. But I would assume that you would just be bored and just want to do things like yeah. that. Yeah, so, I'm with you. would be a master chef. Master linguist. Master everything. Know the stock market inside and out. You see the same stock market every day. But the moment that loop changes and you see market fluctuation, probably piss your pants first. But then secondly, you'd be like, I'm able to anticipate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You didn't make all your money. So money wouldn't be an object anymore. 
I don't know, man. I think it's pretty intriguing right, if you right, had to pick right, a character right, in the movie. Right, right. Shoot, that's the first one, and we spent like 20 minutes yeah, on yeah. it. So. That's was like, man, what is the next movie? <laughs> I, might have, I might have a couple that are even better than that, but that, that was the first one that came up to my mind. Okay, well... Uh, that's a good one, man. I'm telling you. That was, I mean, it struck some good conversation. I'm surprised. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm afraid to hate on you. I'm not going to lie, but... Dang. It worked out. Like, Just hate on, hate on, hate on. Uh, listen, guys, if you're listening to this episode, mine are going to be to the point not to contradict yours. But maybe it'll spark discussion. And that, exactly. That's the thing. Uh, but for me, I just made, I've made it very simple to me, you know. Okay. So the first one on my list is um, I would like to be any of the crew members in Ocean Eleven. Any one of them. There's 11 guys. I, I wouldn't mind being any one of those guys. Because you know why? Just for me, it's, one of, it's probably my, in my top 10 favorite movies. And I think I've probably said that a million times. So I have a million movies in my top ten. Uh, but this one really is because I, I, it has a high replay value to me. Just watching the, the different nuanced performances from all the cast, seeing how many of them were still up and coming in, in their stock to where they are now. That, that was 23 years, 24 years ago. And, uh, you know, each character had moments where it's like, they had, that'd be a fun job to have. You had the hacker, you had the, the two bickering sibling brothers, uh, you had the, I guess, like the grifter, which would have been um, Bernie Mac's character, and then you had the two lead guys, and you had the Asian guy, you had the pickpocket. Like each guy had their moment to shine, and it all just seemed fun, even though obviously what they're doing is wrong, and and the the consequences for what they were doing would be very high, and I accept that, and I still want to be because I feel like if you're in danger, it's the danger isn't isn't as bad if you're with a group of people. So let me go to jail with these guys, if, and if we can all be in the same jail cell, I'm cool with that. I'll, I'll accept my fate. Just let me be in the same cell with these guys, or just the same block. But uh, yeah, I mean, each one of those guys had a fun job to me. It was, except for, um, I can't remember his name, but he's the one that had to walk inside. Do you remember this movie at all? Oh, uh, sure. Okay, well, he, he has to walk inside the casino corridors to security, and... Um, he writes down the directions on his hand to how to get back out. Oh, yeah, the, the tech guy. The tech guy, yeah. He sweats uh -huh. and he's wiping And he wipes his... Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's the only guy I probably wouldn't want to be because he seemed to be in the most danger. Okay. And his role is probably the most pivotal. If you don't do your job, nothing else oh, can yeah. happen. Yeah. Uh, I... I will, okay. The, the person that I would like to be on that crew would be the Brad Pitt character. Mm -hmm. The reason why I want to be the Brad Pitt character is that... He's eating in every scene. I want to, oh, that'd be fun. And he looks like Brad Pitt. And he's in shape like Brad Pitt. Yeah. So he can't. He couldn't be eating like that all the time. But if he could be that character and be that have that type of metabolism where he's just eating all the time, awesome. Best looking one, arguably of the group. I had a lot of good looking guys in there. Uh, doesn't go to jail like Danny Ocean does. Right. So I wouldn't want to go to jail. And I wouldn't want to do what the the acrobat guy does to be squeezed into that little little bitty box and then. Have to have oxygen mm -hmm. to make it through. Um, climb out in into the safe room. Nearly drop something on the floor that would activate the alarm. And then he had to do acrobatics to get to the door right. ledge. And I guess can do. I wouldn't want to do any of that. Well, if you're if you're that but, character, you have those skills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So but, that's the thing. But if I just like one, I'd do the rampant. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. Do the rampant. All right, that choice. Uh. My second choice in my movie uh, movie list here, top ten movies I'd love to be a character in, is kind of similar to my first one, but uh, a bit more medicinal. So, the movie's name is Limitless. Came out in 2011, starring Bradley Cooper, Robert De Niro. That is an excellent choice. Abby Corners. Oh, Yo, thank you. to you, man. Directed by Neil Berger, um, or Berger could be. Uh, but basically, it's the movie of a, a kind of a loser guy. I don't think I'm, I'm, quite, I, I'm saying that. He's an author, right? Like he's writer. an author who's never written a word. Yeah. But he's he's got a publishing deal, and uh, he's he's got a deadline that he's got to make, <clears throat> and he hasn't written anything. He's got severe writer block. Runs to an old friend, who offers him a solution to his writer block, which is a single clear pill. That. But he claims it's been FDA approved and that we only use 20% of our brains as humans and this allows you to use the rest of your brain for a certain amount of time. He takes the pill and basically is able to write his book in three days and reorganizes his life and, you know, he's a schlub of a human being 
and he's able to transform himself basically into Bradley Cooper in three days <laughs> using this pill. And there's a whole there's a whole bunch of stuff that comes with that and consequences. And actually, the movie starts on him with him on the ledge of a building about to jump. Uh, that's where this pill has led him ultimately. But the idea, and ultimately, it's such a good idea that they made a television show after the movie of it. That was on CBS for a season. One season. I loved it, but it got canceled, yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, but the idea is what I am latching on to with this this want to be in a movie. So I, I don't know if I specifically want to be Bradley Cooper in this movie, but I would like access to this pill and to see what would happen with me in on this pill for a day, how using all of my brain to try to accomplish things in my life we're changing in a short amount of time. So. You don't you don't think you would get hooked? Because I think one day is enough for you to get hooked. <clears throat> yeah, the the but see that's it's not a traditional addiction. It's a dig an addiction to success and being at your ultimate. Um, I wrote down basically you become the perfect version of yourself with a single pill. Uh -huh. That would be the addiction. You know what I mean? To be the perfect version of myself all the time. Um, so. My question to me when I was thinking about how this would apply to me being in the movie as a character is, what would I get accomplished, right? Everything that I've ever wanted to do, but never found the time or inspiration to do, like write that novel or, or a screenplay that you've always been wanting to write, but never could just put it together, uh, discovering different ways to take advantage of things like the stock market so that money would, would never be an issue for you again. Um, what if you had like anxiety about social anxiety or romantic anxieties? You'd overcome all of those to secure maybe a long and meaningful relationship. Short amount of time, obviously, but if you're your perfect self. Yeah, well, for one day, though. You'd have it for one day. So what if you get the girl today and then the pill was up tomorrow? Right, like, right. Who are you? So in the movie, he's able to get access to more pills. Yeah, and but. He has to go get more and more and more. The side effects to take but it every day. But let's say two things in this premise. You can get access to as many of those pills that you wanted. Mm -hmm. One, two, no side effects. All right, just just premise on that. And in this one, I don't remember. He figures it out. Yeah, yeah. It's a correct dosage that you mm -hmm. get. He gets a dosage that he needs and a supply. Right. Because he's smart and he figures it out way early. Uh, and they show it at the end of the movie, but I think he's been processing this theory. What happens in the movie for a long time? Mm -hmm. Like he's he was telling the Robert De Niro character. He's like, I'm seven steps ahead of you. I'm like 20 steps ahead yeah. of you. You know, like 50 steps ahead of you. He's like way ahead. Mm -hmm. But this De Niro's character thinks he has it over on Cooper, but he didn't realize how smart he's become. And he's been thinking about this strategy for a long time. Uh, so so you can have this pill for as long as you need it. And, it, and the doses that's correct for you. And, you know, you know, so basically it's turning you into this. But you're all relying on a pill, though. Mm-hmm. And if you want to get off the pill, there's no hurt, no foul, and you just become what you are now. But you still have all the advantages that you gained previously from whatever you've done. So if you wrote a book at the time that you were on the pill, you'd benefit from all the comings from it. Right. Without the pill. So even if you only had the pill for a limited amount of time, what could you get done in that amount of time that would set you up for the rest of your mm -hmm. life? Right. So, you know, I thought about in the long term, building long term relationships. I thought about it in the short term. If you just if you just needed it really quickly for something, what if you're stressing over your college finals? Boop. Right? What if you can't write your PhD dissertation and then you write it in a day because you're on this pill? Uh -huh. Right? Um, we need to pass the bar exam or what if you had a, you know, you wanted to win every debate or every argument that you ever, you know, if you're going into something difficult, like you could do that with this pill. You could be the best version of yourself. So, you know, you could really, to me, you could crack the code on anything kind of similar to um, uh, Groundhog Day. That's time. It gives you the ability to crack the code mm -hmm. on anything. This is medicine that gives you the ability to crack the code. Medicine that unlocks your brain. It gives you the, the ability to potentially do things like uh, create, you know, crack the code on anything like quicker scientific breakthroughs, medical cures. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You really want to save the world with some of this this stuff you have I guess going I on. I do. You know, it is a reflection don't. of the mirror. No, that's true. I don't know. I just thought you could just be like uh You'd be like the ultimate humanitarian. I don't yeah. I, I get, it's just one of my mind like that. I, I have you have, such a, you have such a pure soul. No, 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 it's not it's not that. <laughs> it's not that. It's my uh I got news recently that uh 
Two of my relatives. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Not on air. We don't want to talk about two of my relatives got cancer. Oh. Yeah, that's not a bad thing. Oh, okay. It's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing to talk about. It's not personal. Super personal. It, 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 so maybe that's been on my mind. Mm -hmm. Because of that, um, subconsciously, they're fine. They're going through treatment. They're reacting well to treatment. Actually, three. I've had three members now. Oh. They're, but they're, but they, they reacted well, and they've got the... They, you know, they've got the, the medical treatment and the medical needs are being met. So that that part of it. But maybe that's just been on my mind lately. But mm. but 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 it is a good point to this that if you did want to use it for good, whether it's living ten thousand years or taking this pill, it could be applied to bad, certainly, but it can also do a lot of good too. So because at the end of the day, if all of your needs are being met, your health is good, um your money's you never have to worry about money, what do you do with your time? Self-entertainment, I do that already. I, I, I self-entertain all the time. It's my self-medication. Watching these movies and, and TV shows allows me to escape all the troubles in my life. Mm -hmm. It's already my oasis, right? I already have that. So what else could I do with all this extra time, uh, extra knowledge? It would just seem pertinent to like try to make the world better as mm -hmm. a whole. Mm -hmm. You know, make, make everything that's so crummy around us better. I don't know why you would want to do the opposite, but maybe some people do. But if you're already fulfilling all of your needs, what's the what's the point of having all this extra limitless stuff or Groundhog Day stuff if it's not improving the lives of people around you? I, I well, know. I mean, if I take the pill, I can successfully rob a bank and get away with it. Good. I can, you'd, be a, you'd be a criminal genius. Yeah, and I can help others with the money I give away. So you'd boom. be Robin Hood, right? Yeah, yeah you could. I'm going to pick me other people still, too. I'm just a criminal. <laughs> you probably could do it without... If you were that smart, you'd probably do it without being a criminal. Also true. But and it's called the stock market. But if you had a short amount of time, you had one pill, maybe. Yeah. You just have one pill, to commit the perfect crime. I could only do it once, because I would become addicted for sure. Because I don't even know what I would do in that day once it hits. But I know it would, I would wake up the next day, and I would feel like this is too dangerous for me to try to do all this. But if you had an opportunity to unlock all of your brain for eight hours, for the next eight hours. Uh, what would you think that you'd want to do? That's a good question. Well, I'm definitely cranking out three or four scripts, for sure. There you go. Yeah, become my own chat GPT. You know, I don't need yeah, yeah, AI yeah. for that. You got your own. Kinda, you're yeah. using your own. That's it. It's not even AI because it's not artificial. Right. It's just AI. Yeah, it's just AI. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's copyright. Good. Copyright. Yep. Copyright. <laughs> All right, the, my, that, those two are pretty serious stuff. I guess kind of serious. The rest of mine are a little bit more jovial. So okay, a little bit all right. More. Uh, What's the next one of you? Second one on my list is is more of a fun one. If anyone has ever seen Ready Player One, Ooh. it revolves around uh, basically VR headsets in the future mm -hmm. that interject your avatar into like this virtual alternate world. reality, yeah, virtual mm -hmm. world. Uh, it's a fun movie, but it has like a, of course, it has to go dark side with this people who can control yeah. of it, but. I just have I just, to have a journey. I, yeah, I just want to be one of the characters that has access to the headset. That's it. You just want, to, you want VR. I just want, to, I just want VR. That's it. Like high quality. Yeah, I want to be able to really want to fill create like every single aspect of my avatar and implement that person into a virtual world and make friends. And to some degree, you can already do that, yes, in 2024. Yeah, but it doesn't look like that. Not at all. Not, a cl not even close. Not at all. Like, in this movie, you have people falling in love with other people's avatars. Like, because oh obviously love is, and the real world is working out for me, so let me go into the VR oh, world. Oh, Lord, we're getting real personal. We are, but listen, man, it's a long story. It's a long story. I don't want to get into it, but just, to, yeah, give me those headset, and I want a real-life avatar that I can, you know, um, change and alter every aspect of my avatar from head to toe. And I'll probably just make them like five eight, five nine. That's really the only change I probably would make. <laughs> I just, you know, being five four, I'm so. You talk about limitless. I'm so limited. Yeah, being five yeah, four, yeah. give me, you know, five eight, five nine. That's it. Golly, and, man. You know, and, and everything else, I'm pretty much good. But I'd like to just hang out in that world. That would be my drug. Because I'm single, no kids or anything like that. I would work my eight hours at my job, and as soon as I clock out, headsets yeah. on until it's bedtime. Yeah. That might be, you know, and. and I'm in it more than you now. I'm I'm in the VR stuff at the moment. Uh, but in 20 years, when we're old men, old I guess older men, more mature, more mature. That might be, and I don't want to say it's going to be common, but that might be a true escapism for you as an older man. If you know, if you're like you're restricted or you're restricted to bed or you, know, you can't walk as well or whatever, or you can't get out, mm -hmm. VR might be a great alternative because if you can't physically go out and be there. 
if you maybe you can virtually be there and still be living your life in your own mind. And, and you know what? It actually keeps your mind active. Active, yeah. So that it could be a a cure, not a cure, but it could be. It can help with the things it. like yes. that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and awesome. speaking of, it's very timely because um, those the new Apple uh, VR goggles are coming out here pretty soon. They are. They're super expensive. It, yeah. So I'm gonna wait until probably generate the third generation comes out. Okay. They'll look, them, huh? they'll look cooler. They'll be cheaper in price. They'll have uh, more functionality because right now I think the um, the battery on those only lasts like two hours. Yeah. It has to be plugged in, so it's not. We can't like move around. It's not wireless. So and of course by the third or fourth generation they'll add other things to it to make it even cooler. You, put, you can't be plugged in the entire time and just be running. I mean you off, can, but if, guess, you, so, if you plug if you, it in, so I guess if you go wireless, it's two. It's hours. two hours. But, but you can plug in it the whole time, and then it'd probably be all day. Yeah, you know. but who wants to just sit there plugged in like it's like the Matrix? I have to stay right here, you know. You want the freedom, but also the experience of it. From what I understand, my brother's really hyped about about it. Um, but you know, it's not really, it's not a really a, a gaming person. Yeah, it's a, it's more yet. like a work and uh, watching movies on the big screen type of entertainment thing. So they, and the price to do that seems a little. It's not justified, yeah. But I think when they start implementing other elements like gaming and things like that, yeah. then it'd be better. Yeah, for and sure. and and the and the price won't be so. It seems so absorbent. But this particular one is not for this particular one. The first generation is for people that are early adopters that love the, to get the fresh tech, mm-hmm. and uh, and and it, it may not have the usefulness yet, but they're banking on. Well, the, one they love the fact that they get it before anyone else. I That's think it's all it is. Big, big thing. Yeah. It, the, the the first generation of any like high class tech is for the people that can say I got it first. Yeah. I hate those people though. <laughs> Even though I was the first one with a PS5, um, I had to do one flex in life. That's the only flex I need. Now I'm good. Everything else, I can get it 10 years later. I'm cool. All right. Okay. Uh, all right. So mine's, mine's a little bit fun as well. This Mine's the, the movie that I fell in love with as a kid. I just want to say my deodorant's really strong, but it smells great. Oh, good. <laughs> Dude, it's better than the opposite. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I thought it was my beard oil. I was like, why do I, feel like I smell like a fresh garden? I was like, oh, that's the deodorant that I used. I know. It's just for you, man. I'm just doing for you. good. I'm doing good over here too, man. I got, I got the, <laughs> I got the cologne and the, and the underarm going. I probably would smell it, but I feel like I literally bathed in it. There's no, I, I use it a little too much. I'd rather you smell yourself than smell me. <laughs> You're absolutely right. We are in a public place, so yeah. Anyway, continue. Uh, so I fell in love with this movie as a kid. That's why I'm enamored with it. And then the idea of being in this movie, um, I like the idea of being in and being the Rocketeer. Mm. Uh, Billy Campbell, Jennifer Connelly, Timothy Dalton, Alan Arkin, Terry O'Quinn. Oh, wow, look at you. 1991 movie directed by one of my favorite directors. Might not be in the top ten, but close, Joe Johnston, who who did uh, October Sky, underrated film with Jake J.J. Hall. Mm-hmm. If you haven't seen it, you need to check that the out. The 18? He did the 18 movie? Uh, no, but he didn't do the 18 movie. Um, 18 movie was uh, Callahan. Uh, it was Joe Callahan. Was it a Joe? It was still Joe, right? I think it might be Joe. Okay. I don't remember the first name, but Callahan. Uh, no, Joe Johnston, Honey, I Shrek the Kids, Jumanji, Jurassic Park 3, Hidalgo, which is an underrated movie. You haven't seen Hidalgo. Uh, Captain America, First Avenger. He did that. Oh, that's right. That's so, but he, the reason why he's kind of known is he's, he's kind of got a, uh, especially with uh, October Sky and, um, and, and the Rocketeer and Captain America, he does the th- like the thirties and forties really well. Like, mm-hmm. The aesthetics of that he mm-hmm. does really well. Um, if you don't know what what uh, the Rocketeer is, basically it was a comic book first written by Dan Stevens. Uh, and it's basically pop, uh, pop fiction, where uh, not kind of pulp fiction in a way too. But but it's it was basically the 1930s. It actually the movie takes place in 1938, and it's set in that era. And uh, uh, a pair of pilots discover uh, a jetpack that is placed in their plane by accident, and then he puts the jetpack on, not knowing what it is and discovers that it is uh, what it is, a jetpack, that he can fly and basically put a rocket on his back. And then he becomes uh, a Disney superhero, basically, back in 1991. It's like Iron Man without all the special features. Yes, it is Iron Man if he only had a backpack. Yeah. 
Uh, why do I want to be in this movie? Well, I, I like the idea of flying with a jetpack, although it's weird because I'm not particularly fond of flying and I hate heights. So the two would make you think that, but it's just something beautiful uh, and uh, envious to watch someone do. And who wouldn't want to fly? I think a lot of people, if they had to pick a superpower, they would pick flight. And that's what this is basically doing, getting a, getting a jet pack. Uh, for you, you'd probably love it because you'd get to, you know, get to your home faster. You would have to bypass all that traffic. Yeah, but then after, like, can you imagine somebody with a backpack flying and they're just holding luggage? Yeah. With the power pack on? That'd be, that's a lot I would of... pack light, but yeah, I could see it. <laughs> you'd have to pack light. Because your backpack's full already with all that jet fuel or whatever is back there on your back. Four hours would be jacked, though. Uh, but also, you know, it's, consider the era. Okay, this is Hollywood, uh, California, 1938 era. So this is right at the end of the Depression and before World War II. Nazis are a thing in this movie. And, you know, probably the thing that I disliked the most about if I was in the character of this. But basically, it was just a simpler time to live in. Now, if you're a person of color or, you know, like, like me, maybe not the best time to go back to. And that's something we have to consider when it comes to some of these time travel films yeah, and stuff. Yeah, you're right. Like, would I want to be in a time travel film? You're right. Well, if we go back in time, I might not fit the description of the people that are all cool back then. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? As I'm half Filipino, so I maybe, you know, they think I'm something different than they are, and that's pretty much all they needed back then. Right. Uh, so we have to take that kind of in consideration. But if I am, get to pick the character that I want to be, uh -huh. and it's still me... Uh, and everybody treats me like they treat the character in the movie, then I'd be okay with it with being Cliff Secord and flying around in a jetpack. Okay. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Uh, my next uh, movie is also a comic book character. Ooh, what? Wait a minute. This is pre-breaking news, everybody. It, Hold up. It's Mike actually taking a comic book. Unprecedented, I know. Unprecedented film here. Um, inspired <laughs> film. What's this? So it's the it's the title character, and, okay. and it's it's Blade. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Whoa. No. Wait. No. Wait. No. <laughs> Why not? Why no? You wanna you wanna live in a world where vampires are eating people? I wanna live in a world where I can kill vampires. Yes. Oh, and gosh. be very effective and cool while doing it. That's well. Okay. And I'm a daywalker. I can be on the sun. They can't. Yeah, but in order to be a daywalker, you have to take some like painful medicine, right? Well, yeah. That's a side effect, right? <laughs> okay. So I, okay. All right. Okay. If, if that's the pants to to pay to be able to kill vampires right. and walk out in the daylight, so be it. Mm. He doesn't seem like he has much of a social life. Yeah, if I don't have like my whistler, you know, as my sidekick, this yeah. I'm your whistler. I'd be your whistler. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> no, you've got like eighty other friends who probably <laughs> put as a whistler as well. I have candidates. whistlers all over. You'd the You'd have places. whistler interviews. We yeah. had like a job interview for whistler, <laughs> and you'd have to windle down auditions to figure out which one of us. Can grow the most muscles and gray hair and long hair at the same time. And how good are you at making this serum? And puns. Uh, and some puns. kind of vampire puns. You make me laugh. Yeah. <laughs> but he, I mean, he had he had cool tech even for the first one was nineteen ninety eight the first movie he had cool tech for back then. Um, I mean he was he killed cool car he had cool car and he killed people with shades on. Who doesn't want to kill somebody with shades on? Dude, and he's just he, you've got. Um, Quick healing ability. Mm -hmm. You've got your quicker. I guess you're. Like, I never I saw him like run super fast, but he's just super just reflexes quick. and durability, reflexes. all that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, it make that kind of job makes it tough in the the love department because hey, I got to go kill vampires. Or this is what I do. Do you still accept me? Probably not. But hey, I get to kill with shades off. Okay. And I get a, I get I get the cool sword. I get to shoot and slice at the same time. That's true. How many jobs can you think of at the top of your head where I can hold a gun and a sword at the same time and use them both? So you say if you could voluntarily leave this world you're in here and walk into the blade world and be blade, you do it. One thousand percent. Wow. Now not not <clears throat> the top of this whole list, but it's on okay. there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's okay. a possibility. Uh I you know, and uh I, I do I see I have similar Conflicting uh, feelings about my next choice, too. I would like to be a Jedi in Star Wars. I almost put that. I almost put that. Now, you do have... Now, here's the thing. A lot of downsides. As we've seen in... You know, in, in numerous now, Star Wars kind of... Uh, Star Wars 
things. A lot of them die. There's a lot of, no, 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 it's, uh, <laughs> they do. Yeah, you're right, they do. Um, that the, the, the dark side, you know, the empire, from their perspective, they're just trying to bring order to the universe. That's that it. is chaotic. It's very simple. And that seems like a goal-worthy type situation. Like, I'm joining the Empire because I want to make this world, these worlds, and this universe a better and they place. Get, they get to feel emotion. But then, yeah, but then you look at the head dude, and you're just like, dude, well, I mean, yeah, dude, I don't need to follow black, him. And he's like, he, I know, but that's, yeah, I guess, I guess it's a similar Donald Trump Republican. <laughs> oh, my God. If, if, you, if you see that, I'm not a Democrat. By the way, but if you see that, I'm I, I can see that. That, that. Yeah, that's I'm independent. Yeah, but I can see that uh, from a certain perspective. They could they could see that that, mm -hmm. that way too. So could you imagine if what if the only way you could become a, a Jedi or a Sith you choose, but you you get to interview with Sith, you can interview with Jedi, right? And they're Determine like, well, which side do you? Yeah, and yeah. hey, yeah. you pitch pitch me. Let me see who who. Who has the better pitch? I'll tell you one thing you don't want to be is the, the people that don't pick either because well, yeah. they're the ones that are like the, the, the guys that, that are on the side that are <laughs> towering in, in the corner as the battle's happening in front of them. I'm picking something. I just yeah, don't know. I, and if you're going to pick something, you're going to pick Jedi, right? If you, if you probably. Um, anyway, so imagine having Jedi powers or Force powers, I call them, I think, uh, as defined as... Uh, they define it as tapping into spiritual energy that give one extraordinary abilities, such as levitating objects, which is great when the remote is across the room and you can't reach it. Are you going to be the, le the lazy Jedi? <laughs> you would can bring it over? So yeah. many times have you wanted... Dude, don't tell me that you've never once stretched your hand out just to see if you had telekinesis to bring that... TV oh, remote over. I did. I woke, I woke up this morning and tried it. There you go. Me? That's what I'm talking about. Well, you got them here. So, and you're going to be the guy that makes a sandwich using the force? And if I had that kind of ability, I wouldn't spend the mental power doing it, probably. So, if somebody came to your what door, what I would like, do okay. is trick another person to make my sandwich for me because they have tricking of minds but why as a Jedi it? power. Well, that's really like, mean. Mike, really go mean. and take care of this tab for me. You want, to, you want to take care of the tab for me, Mike. <laughs> And he's like, I'm going to take care of the tower. I'm so like, you're going to abuse you, your power. You should be a Sith. You're going to abuse all this power. <laughs> I'm just saying it's available to you, all right? Levitating things, tricking people's minds, and then you have foresight. You can see things before they happen. Not everything. Not every Jedi can but do But a little that. bit. Of, well, look, you just, if you're opened up and you could choose what kind of Jedi abilities did you get. I'm going to uh, stop at levitating I want everything. That's, that's all I, I want. I want everything. Eh, okay. I want everything. Because that can come into a situation now. Like, you could use them all for evil, certainly, especially the mind tricking thing, right? You could use that kind of thing of the ways you can really, you want to rob a bank, it's really easy to do that. But there might be some situations where it's good, like, you know, I need to get on this flight. Let me get, <laughs> let me get, let me, let me get in line, like, quick. You know what I mean? Are you, oh, like, man. you, because you, you, you're a club bouncer. I mean, you go to club to club, you bounce around. You get right in, get the best tables, you get that free champagne service, hey. or whatever, popping bottles it's left lit. and right. We lit. And then the owner's paying for it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, man, give this man everything he wants. Yep. <laughs> He's got that power on Okay, you, you swayed me. You got me. <laughs> you got me again, see? I don't like your list, y'all. I don't like it at all. <laughs> you agree with it too yeah. much. <laughs> you know what I mean? You will give me your number. <laughs> what is your... We could just discuss just your list, and I can say if I agree or disagree. Just forget my list. It's not even no, entertaining. No, no, we're going to go through it, because uh, the more ideas, the better. All right, what's your next one? Oh, uh, that was good, man. Um... This one is a, it's a classic. Like, it needs no introduction. It's it's Ice Cube. It's Chris Tucker. It's Friday. Oh, like, wait a minute. You want to be... No, like, no, no. Let me, you let me, can live in that life now, if I think if you want it. Well, let me get to it. You want to get so, fired from your job on your day off? You I don't, do don't want to be Craig. I don't want to <laughs> okay. be Smokey. Oh, okay. I just want to be a random character big worm. in that movie. You want to be Big Worm? I can be Big Worm. Okay. I can be Big Worm, just, you know... <laughs> Denying kids of their chili, chili cheese Fritos. <laughs> no, but when I watch that movie, it's like, it's just, it's, uh, it, it deals with, you know, real life social themes of poverty and, you know, urban life and things of that nature. But at the end of the day, it's about just two friends hanging out in the hood, just spending the day in the hood. If you remove the, the Debo element to it, it's just two, two best friends kicking it in the hood on the, on the porch, you know? It's the same thing that, you know, your homeboys do, like, on the East Coast in New York, you just kick it on the stoop. 
You is know, there just, something nostalgic about that for it you? It is. Yeah, yeah. It is because I guess at the time it came out, me being a little bit younger, but mm-hmm. I had my crew like on my block and we always kick it. We always just hang out. Like we would, you know, do sports and we would just hang out, hide and seek, all that stuff. And so I kind of equate it to that as an in a nostalgic feeling. Yeah. Feeling is just like I'm just hanging with my boys out for the day. It's outside. Taking a, taking a step back in time and yeah. just going back to because they, nobody. Because I know you like all that music. I know that oh, for course, sure. That's yeah, your of that's course. your time. Had to be. That, that was all classic. But yeah, just hanging out on the block with your boys, like you know, better times. There's really no drama. Like you see the girl running by, you like, and you're like, oh man, I oh, wish yeah, I could get with her. Days. It's like I miss those days so much. It's just mm-hmm. simpler times. There's no, there's no drama. There's no adulting. You know, having to pay bills and. I might get fired, none of that stuff. There's no, who cares if I get sick? I'll just, we're all sick. It's the whole neighborhood, you know what I mean? Like, I miss all that stuff. Okay. Um, I'm going to jump into a kind of a different category now. Horror? No, we're going into love, baby. Oh, here we go. You're going to depress me? No, we're okay. going, well, maybe. Um, Actually, I got one of mine, so that's fine. So, so we're going into more on the romantic side of things here. If I could be a character mm. in a movie. Now, I didn't go all gross, okay? I didn't go gross. I went. I just went more idyllic, romantic. But one of my favorite romantic movies is from 1999. It's called Notting Hill mm-hmm. with uh, Julia Roberts and Hugh Grant. Basically, Hugh Grant lives in a small town. He owns a bookstore in a small town, and he's just minding his business and meets a a girl in his bookstore, comes in as a customer, and they get along really well. Runs into her later. He discovers that she's actually a celebrity and uh, a very, like, the world's most popular actress. They They meet in a bookstore, and they go through a lot through this movie, but basically the idea is that a... Um, a celebrity actress or model, if you're a male, I guess, or it actually didn't even matter, actually. That, the gender didn't even matter with this. Just someone that you're attracted to, that the world's attracted to. Um, you have a romantic encounter with them, and it turns into so, something long-term in the movie does. So so just imagine that you're, you're just living in your, you're living your life, you're living in a small town, and suddenly you run into, well, who's your celebrity crush? You just name that person in your own mind. Wait, so you want to be the you want to own a bookstore? I wouldn't mind owning a bookstore, but I don't. In my mind, that's not the reason I'd like to be the character in this movie. Mm. Fine, I'm fine with owning a bookstore, but whenever. But the, the the more the bigger premise is running to your celebrity crush, and and sparking a relationship with them that ultimately leads to something long. And who was your celebrity crush? But now that we're on the topic, you brought. I try it up. to think of that. Um, yeah, I try to think of that for. For a long time, it was Olivia Munn. I really liked Olivia Munn. She was kind of my celebrity crush because I was a big fan of her show, uh, Attack of the Show, for a long time. Um, and then she just exploded and became such a, a, a more famous person. It's kind of fizzled and, out now, though. I mean... She's she's I mean, she's not married, but she's... Uh, I don't think she's married, but she's with that comedian now. Um, and uh, they have a child with him. So uh, I can't... So I can't, I can't remember his name, but... Uh, she's, 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 uh, you know, uh, living her life and she seems like she's doing well, even though she's not doing maybe, uh, bigger movies anymore or whatever, but that was for a while. And I try to think of that, you know, Mike, I was thinking, man, who is my, who would I want to, and I didn't really, couldn't really come up with a, a great answer. Really? Yeah, because I'm really just an awkward age, man. you know? Yeah, but we're not, we're not worried about that. We're just talking about. If this thing happens, who would it be? Yeah. Who would you, you want know, it to be? Yeah, I don't I don't know. Wow. I really don't know. Wow. Um Yeah. Do you do you have someone? That, of course. Okay, who is yours? Ana de Armas. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. That's, that's very, a great very choice. easy for me. Yeah, that's yeah. Super yeah. great choice. Yeah. No, so so Anna, you run into her, uh, you know, at your job or wherever, maybe out for lunch, and you run into her and, and something sparks there just initially. And then then you discover that you were able to meet with her again and that sparked something else and then boom. So that's the premise of this movie. That's why I think if you could be a character in this movie and you had to pick one, mm-hmm. why not Julia Roberts really in her prime, the biggest stardom part of her? That's what I was going to say when you were going through the synopsis and you were yeah, saying yeah. that she was a celebrity in the movie. It's a bit meta. Yeah. What do you mean? It's a bit meta that she's a, she's a famous celebrity in real oh, life. Oh, in the movie. Playing, in real life. Yes. yes, exactly. But who are you going to... 
You know what I mean? Like who? I guess you could get a complete unknown to play that role. At that point, you don't think Sandra Bullock could have done that? Sure. Yeah. At yeah. that point, I think so. Yes. No, a lot of a lot of them. I think yeah. today it would be Anna de Armas, or it would be uh, mm -hmm. the woman who wrote, uh, Margot Robbie. It would be her. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. So it's just whoever the hot it girl would be at the time could fill this role. But mm -hmm. A lot of people could fill this role. But who would it be in your situation at your time of life? Like. You know, for me. I want you to think about this, and we'll be next time we convene. I want you to tell me who your celebrity crush. Because now I'm curious, and now the fans want to know. Oh, well, I've, I've told you money, money, money. Well, yeah, yeah, but I mean, she's taken. So when I was younger, uh, I really loved Terry Hatchie, uh, mm -hmm. who had played Lois Lane in uh, Lois and Clark. Yeah, that was for a long time. It was her. So I definitely have a certain type. I, have, I definitely have brunette type. It's, it's been my type in the past. Okay. So. Both uh, in movies and, and personally. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but anyway, all right. Uh, long enough on Notting Hill. What's your next one? Uh, my next one is um, so it's weird that we're kind of you did comic books, then I did comic books. Yeah, and I you told did you. romance, yeah. and now I'm doing romance. It's kind of strange. Although we haven't seen each other in a month, we're still. <laughs> um, this is um, you probably heard of it. It's a Richard Linklater directed film. Oh, no. Um, kind of an outdated name in today's Hollywood. You know, directors and writers. I don't know why. Should I mean, be. but he's I mean, he any about even a little bit of history will. He's just that. a little inactive. I think is what it is. He's oh. been way too long. He needs to come back. Uh, but this movie, uh, it's a classic in my opinion. Um, it's just two characters in one night over the course of one night fall in love. It's just it's dialogue heavy, but the dialogue is it's there's a lot of realism in the dialogue in that it's not it's not cinematic. Like it doesn't try to be something any more than what it really is. It's just everyday life. You got this young American, and he meets this French girl. He's backpacking through Europe, and they just connect over one night, and they basically fall in love, and they make this promise that I'll come back in a year. We'll meet here at the same spot, and it sparks a franchise. Two other sequels after that, um, and this is uh, Before Sunrise, with uh, Ethan Hawke and. I I can't remember the lady's name. I don't either. Uh, her last name is Delpy. I remember that. Delpy. If I saw her face, I would know it. Uh, I would love to be Ethan Hawke's character. Because at the end of the day, some people may think I'm this macho, don't feel emotion. But deep down, like, I'm, I'm a softy, man. Like, I don't ever see I, you as an opposite way. I <laughs> am. I'm a romantic at heart. Yeah. And most people don't know that. But yeah. I am. Okay. Uh, and contrary to belief, I wear my heart on my sleeve. When I feel, I feel... Uh, Deeply, intensely, and you know, I think as I get older in years, mature in years, mm -hmm. I think I'm getting to the point where I'm starting to accept the fact that, you know what, actually, I think I do want to settle down. You know, I went through a big uh, conflicting debate with myself, inner turmoil, if you will, of do I really want to or do I not? But you know, I, I'm getting to the point now where I think, and it's not really so much an age thing. I think it's something I've mentioned earlier about there's something beautiful about getting older, is you start to refine your thoughts and perspective on certain things. And for so many years, I just didn't know if I really wanted that or not, that aspect of my life. I, like, now I'm at an age where <clears throat> a lot of people that I'm around in similar circles, they're in long-term relationships or they have families and kids and things of that nature. And I'm one of the few that doesn't. And it's like, man, I don't know. I see what this looks like for other people that I'm close to, but I don't know if I really want that. And it's not that I, the representation of a relationship that I see is negative. It's just I don't know if I want that for me. But now I'm starting to get to a point where that's becoming more of a common um, thought in my head, more recurring thought in my head. It's like, you know what, maybe I do want to settle down. Um, and, I, and I think that I'm open to the idea of if I re meet the right person and we click. And I, I, do, I, do, I will say this. I don't want kids. Um, I'm at a point now where I don't want to have to go through the, the growing pains of raising a kid. And I just wouldn't want to bring a kid into the world as it, at the state of the world it is today. Mm -hmm. um, and then also a little bit of it's selfish. You know, I just don't want to bring a kid in the world because I don't want to raise a kid. You know, and I think there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but if the person I end up meeting has kids, I'm open to that. You know, I've dated women who have kids, so I have a better understanding of what it's like to date a single mom, to know the struggles that they go through, because it's very different, obviously, than dating a single woman with no kids. Priorities are different. I understand their priorities. Their kids come first, and wherever there's room for me, I'll play that role. I'm cool with that. Um, but yeah, I think um, settling down is a, is something I definitely would like to to try my hand at for sure. In, in this movie, I mean, I've never seen them. I used to work at a video store, and I think before sunrise, 
That's the first one, what it was called. Right, right. right. It was, it was always rented. Like it was, it was never not rented. Mm -hmm. It seemed like it was the one of the most popular, non, um, you know, it was the, it was not not popular. It wasn't well well known. Right, it's not. But it was so popular. Like it wasn't like one of those mainstream. That's what I was trying to think. Mm -hmm. of. It wasn't a mainstream movie, but it was out all the time, and I couldn't figure out why. <laughs> And then it was it was confusing because it was like before sunset, after sunrise, or, or it was something like yeah, it's like a, each one's a play on the, on the original words, title, yeah. but it's the same two characters over and over again on the on the on the uh, box cover, mm -hmm. and it's like so confusing <laughs> the way they did that. I know it makes sense within those who made the movie, but as just someone an outsider, yeah, it was just these all these sunset, sunrise, <laughs> sun things, after, before, this, that. You didn't know which one came first, yeah. and they all looked the same. Well, if you look at the cover, you can tell, okay, they look right. very young Older. here, so this has to be first. And by the way, um, the actress's name is Julie Delpy. I remember oh, Julie, yeah. Right. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, man, it, I think... So it, in the movie, they do... So, I, I, okay. Based on what you're saying, right? I mean, it sounds like the first movie was okay, just an encounter. Yes, I'll give it away, a because date? the first one's so old. Yeah. So they decide to meet uh, a year later at the same place. Yes. The second one comes before sunset, and... They they're obviously like much older in life. It turns out that I believe, if I can remember correctly, he didn't show up. No, she didn't show up. He went back for her. She didn't show up. She got married, had a life. They run into each other again years later, and they pick up where they left off. So, which is amazing to me. Um, I think that's the more of the romantical side of it, if that's even the word. Mm -hmm. um, and he has he's got one day to promote this book he's writing. He's going to this press tour. And he bumps into her, and they spend the day together. And he keeps talking about how I've got to catch my flight to go to the next place to promote. And towards the end, he starts to get very comfortable, you know, being with her and spending time with her. And by the end, she's like, "Hey, you know, you're gonna catch your flight. You're gonna miss your flight." And he kind of gives this look, and the camera fades to black. And so we never know. And then in the third one, which I think is before midnight, um, they're married, and the the dynamic is vastly different from what it was before. It's much more realistic like you know they've weathered in years and in, in their relationship the time of each other yeah yeah kind of sort of so it's kind of like that so you see the whole gamut of a relationship from the beginning i won't say to the end but what it what they go through first meeting to going all the way through these things in life to where they're finally together and maybe it's not quite what they initially thought it was because when you're young and in love it's very different yeah. your vision of what it is is very different reality yeah 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 but they're still together. They're trying to make it work. And I think that's okay, the most important thing. Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> mine's way off of that now. <laughs> I'm going into the world of the fantastic. Um, and, you know, I'm not one that's huge on going to music concerts. I, I've i been to them before. I haven't been to a lot of them. I know this is already. Right now, it's super expensive to go to them right now. It's like crazy expensive to get to... Uh, Taylor Swift tickets or Beyonce tickets or wherever, you know, I'm just saying some of the bigger acts that are out there right now that make a lot of money. Well, Justin Those Timberlake, are you a Justin Timberlake fan? I am. He's, he just announced uh, a world tour. His new album's going to be coming out yeah. soon. And I've seen him in concert before. Really? I've seen him. I've seen, uh, who else? Master P. I don't know if you know who that is. You're asking me? Uh, <laughs> oh, my I'm gosh. Just, okay. Oh, okay. I was going to say, wait a second. All right. Uh, um, I, I mean, oh, what else? That's That's kind of... Uh, some Christian uh, things that I watched. Um, Creed? You saw Creed? No, I haven't seen Creed. Okay. Now, you can go through a list of, say, have you seen this? And okay, like got it. All right. Anyway, like I said, I'm not a huge fan of concerts, but I would want to go to the concert that's in this film. I know what this is. Okay. And it's a 2010 movie? I think, yeah. I think that's about the right time I'm thinking Directed of. by Edgar Wright? I think we're still on the same page. Uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, 2010. Uh, Actually, you know, I'm, I'm wrong. I was thinking Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist, which also okay. has Michael Cera. It is. It's a Michael Cera movie as well. This movie has uh, also Mary Elizabeth Winstead, uh, Aubrey Plaza, Kieran Culkin, Chris Evans makes a, a nice appearance in this movie. And, of course, it is directed by Edgar Wright, the guy who did Shaun of the Dead, Baby Driver, Hot Fuzz. Basic summary of this movie is based on a comic book, uh, pulp a comic book. Um, and it's just basically S Scott Pilgrim falls in love with a girl. 
she has uh, some evil exes, and they have this kind of uh, really sci uh, not sci-fi, but a special effects laden movie about battles between him, Scott Pilgrim, and her evil exes, seven evil, evil exes. One of them being Chris Evans, one of them also being Brandon Routh from Superman fame. Uh, Brie Larson uh, also in this movie as well. It's a little surprise there. But the thing that I want to do in this movie and the, why I would like to be a character in this movie is because I would like to be or imagine being a member of the audience during the Battle of the Band scene where mm -hmm. Scott and his band named Sex Babob, uh, they bat they're battling the uh, Katanaga twins, which are like DJs. Mm -hmm. And there are as they're playing, two twin dragons appear above their heads. Uh, but but that's not even where it starts. The scene literally starts with the twins ripping the roof off the venue. They they play their music and the roof comes off. And everybody's like going crazy in the crowd, right? And this crowd is, is in the middle of these two bands. And they're playing opposite of each other like it's a uh, one versus one fight. Like they're fighting each other and you have a crowd in the middle of all of it. So all the stuff that's happening uh, on the screen is happening above your head. So it's like two dragons and a, it looks like a gorilla, but it's like a hairy gorilla fighting mm -hmm. as they play their music and battle each other. And there's sparks flying everywhere like snowflakes and there's lightning that's going everywhere. It's like the craziest, it would be the craziest concert you've ever been to. And it ends, it starts with the roof coming off and it ends with one of the stages, one of the two stages exploding. It would be so nuts. It would be the greatest concert you've ever been to. Uh, because you'd be right in the middle of all that fighting experience, and they just make it look so good. So if I had to choose one concert to go to and I could be a part of in a movie, it'd probably be that one because it's it's fantastic. And which, it would never happen in real life. Which artist or band would you want to see in that type of concert? If I could choose just, the artist? Yeah, only give me one, though. Oh, just one person? not battling someone? I mean... You want to do Battle of the Bands, you could do that. I mean, just real quick, we can move on. That's what I'm just curious. Okay, is this the first one that comes to mind? I think it would be Prince. I'd like to see Prince mm -hmm. in concert. Well, Michael Jackson. Great choice. Ooh, man, Michael Jackson. <laughs> that's a really good choice. Or Prince versus... Um, uh, All Along the Watchtower, Purple Haze. Oh, Jimmy uh, Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix. Yeah, I mean, I could probably go like... Because they're both, they're both more rock and roll. Yeah. Mike's more pop. I might do Elvis, too. Elvis versus Prince? I'm do Elvis. I never got a chance to see him. I have an idea. This is a multi-million dollar idea. Y'all guys heard it here copyright, first. Copyright, copyright, Yes. So you know they have the new um, Sphere in Vegas? Yes, I was thinking the Sphere could might simulate what I was thinking. If they could do AI Prince, and a, which Prince would never go for it. He, he's been in his grave because he's against all that. But yeah, he would. AI Prince versus AI Elvis in the Sphere yeah. and their songs. Yeah. That's a multi-million dollar idea. People would go in droves to see that. The, where, where Scott Pilgrim takes it to the next level, it would be like 4D. Right, yeah. It was so, you know, the 4D uh, theaters that they have, mm -hmm. it would be that experience in a concert. So things flying above your heads, but then they're also feeling the sparks and all this stuff coming down. Crazy. But you want to burn people? Uh, slightly. Just <laughs> a little burn. <laughs> If you get a little, if you get a little twins, yeah. nobody, no permanent damage to anybody. Sure, it'd be for for the in exchange for the concert of your life. It's just right. like frying fish, you know, a little pop here and there. Dude, some people would rather just get actually burned and to pay some of these ticket prices. That's a fact, for real. All right, so put a little disclaimer at the bottom of the ticket. You might get burned. You make it a little singed. <laughs> a little singed. Yes. Just easy on the beard oil and the hairspray that day. That's true. You, yeah, you better not have too many chemicals in there. That's a good choice, though. Dude, even if you had to wear something to be in that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like full, everything but the face. I just hate to have this constricted, but if you could see everything. Just yeah. have like the eyes cut out where you can still see, you know? Well, not even that, because I still can, I want to see everything. Right, I want to experience right. it, so maybe the head free, but. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Scott Pilgrim's a good choice, though. Thank um, you. Yeah. I was, you know, when you said, I don't know what's I was like, in my mind thinking, he doesn't know. I have no idea. I was close, though. I was close. Um, okay, next one on my list. Um, so the movie's Inception, Ooh. and no one specifically from the movie, but just somebody who can do one of the jobs that this character does in the movie. So Joseph Gordon Levin in the movie is the architect, he can build the world. Um, and then the team recruits um, Ellen Page or Elliot Page now because she, because the lead character Leo's like, I can't build anymore because my mind's messed up. 
So he needs somebody else who can build the, the dream world. And he recruits her. And I want to be the person that can create the dream world. Okay. Like, okay, now I get it. You know, being a creative mind, like you're always imagining different things anyway, things that aren't real, things that maybe could never be invented, but in the, the world of Inception, anything is possible. So I just want to be, I want to be an architect. Okay, I get that. Yeah. yeah be able to create your own world. That's and it, man. Bring other people in it. Yeah. Okay. My okay. own subconscious, yeah. I, I run everything in here. Uh, my next movie is uh, Wonka. Um, Which version? Because it's like three or four okay. now. I went with the new one, the 2023 one, because it's the one I just saw. Okay. Oh, and how it, was it? I, 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 it was charming. Okay. I heard um, it was just subpar. It, it's not, yeah. I, I, but I found it charming, and if you're a fan of Paddington... In Paddington 2, which a lot of people are, it's the same director. Um, so he mm. brings the same sensibility to it. Um, it's 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 Wonka without all of the disturbing darkness stuff that he brought in the first Willy Wonka movie with Gene. Um, you didn't enjoy that? I enjoyed it very no, much. No, I mean, it, it, yeah, but it's, it's very, it's, something happens to him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, because in this movie, he's portrayed very um, positive yeah. and very, like, just seeking... Not only seeking to make his chocolates, but also to help the people around him that are in trouble. Mm -hmm. And he goes and he really wants to help people in this way. Right. So it's a very charming thing that he pulls off. And I haven't been a huge fan of Timothy Chalamet, but I am after this movie. I think he's really great. Uh, he played this. He played this well. He's not the greatest singer in the world. Uh, maybe that might be a knock on him. Yeah, I heard it's I a know. musical, right? It is. Okay. Uh, somewhat, but the, the songs are somewhat forgettable. Uh, but but you know. Um, Come with me and you'll see mm -hmm. the world of imagination. That song's still in it and still done really well. Um, Pure imagination is the name of that song. Yeah. And, uh, and you Grant has a great role as the Oompa Loompa and uh, Olivia Coleman's really good in the movie as a kind of the, the bad the bad guy woman. Um, but the reason I would love to be a part of this film is imagine living in a world where chocolate tastes so good that it's actually magic. Right, like Wonka literally uses things like moonbeams and sunshine for to make these recipes. Uh -huh. So he's me, me, making these magical things, and then <clears throat> some of the chocolates that can do things like make you fly for a short amount of time. You can seemingly create magical worlds in an instant. Like they they create his shop and redecorate it seemingly like in a day uh -huh. to be this real magical place that people love to visit. So basically, it's Disney Disneyland. Like, he just creates it out of candy. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, some some of the Reddit things that I read about this film when I was researching this was that people are like, you cannot convince me that is not a wizard because he does all this <laughs> wizardy type stuff. So it's a bit of a Harry Potter magic thing that, that it has to it. So you're ejecting some of that into the world, but most of it's positive. The really bad people in this world are Olivia Coleman, who <clears throat> makes uh, Wonka sign a contract unknowingly uh, making him a, a servant to them for a certain amount of years until he pays off his debt, and then the other the other one is the chocolate consortium of bad guys that doesn't don't want another chocolate on their, you know, better than theirs. Sounds basically. like the record labels. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah, there's some there's some ties you can you can put to a lot of things, but in the end of the day, it is really a movie about Wonka, um, after coming back and discovering. Well, really, it's it's a it's a journey for him. To reconcile with his mother, who the first one who made him chocolates, to try to recreate what his mother's chocolate was like to him as a child, mm. uh, to be the best chocolate guy they can be. But it's really, to me, the journey is it really starts for him when he gets um, trapped by the bad guys to become a servant for them, and he discovers a group of friends amongst all the servants, and then the movie turns into him trying to get them all out of the situation. And he uses his magical chocolate making abilities to do so, and he and he tackles everything positively. Like every, there's never anything that would put me, me and you are mad, or make me and you want to maybe respond in violence or be, you know, to, to be to me. He reacts with kindness and ingenuity, and his chocolates get him out of those those situations. Mm -hmm. And he never not meets a friend, you know, not even like the bad people in the movie. He's not necessarily ever mean to them. Mm -hmm. He just uh, he just bashes them back with kindness and good heartedness, and I think that's where the Paddington director comes that that out of it. So that would be a wonderful world to live in. I don't know if I'd want to be Wonka, but certainly live in a world where 
sweets and chocolates and things can make you fly and crowds break out and synchronize dance at a whim or like, you know, Walker himself is somebody who's just overwhelmingly positive, helps others, calls himself uh, part mag magician, part inventor, part chocolate maker, and he just uses all those skills to fight evil, which is pretty cool. Okay. I liked it. It'd be kind of a cool world to live in where chocolates are magic. You know what I mean? It would be. I mean, it would, it would suck if he didn't like chocolate like me. I don't like chocolates. Oh, well, yeah, you're true. I would hate to live. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're out of that movie. <laughs> It's a good choice, though. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll catch it on streaming whenever it comes out. Let's see how it is. Yeah, just... It's just... I'm, a fan, I'm a fan of Timothy Chalamet, anyway. He's a great actor, so... Yeah, it's, he's, he's all over it. <laughs> all right, uh, my next movie, we're going to go back to a world within a world. Mm -hmm. I like to be Neo in the Matrix. Oh, yeah, I did think about that. And, and I only thought of Neo from the first Matrix. Not the second one, not the third one. Okay. Uh, and his total journey from... Just hacker, knowing there's something more than what's going on to the end when he frees himself and he's talking about, I'm going to destroy everything you guys have, have built to shield the, the truth from everyone's eyes. I want to be that Neo. Because he can do anything. He came back to life and he gets with Trinity, who was attractive at the time. Not that oh, she's not, no, whoa, 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 hold on. Wow. Not that she's ugly now. Oh, cancel. Podcast no, canceled. No, canceled. Carrie canceled. Ann Moss still looks beautiful today. Dude, it's an opinion. You're fine. It is. It, whether you find her attractive or not, that's still an opinion. Well, you know, the weird thing is when the, the Matrix first came out, I didn't find her attractive at all. I, I think I agree with that. And maybe it was like the personal, the slick personal. back hair was very short, and she seemed very, like, emotionless. Mm. But then, you know, Zion Trinity is very different. Her hair is not all slick back. She's in... I thought in the course of the movie, for me, she just... I'm getting detracted. Yeah, her well, loyalty to, you know, at the end there to him. and The first time you see her when they meet in the club, I was like, nah, this ain't it. First of all, I'm not going to be in a club where everyone's dressed in leather. Leather tights like that. And and whatever um, uh, Rob Zombie's playing, that's not my kind of club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't belong in a place like that. I'm, I'm scared. He looked like he didn't belong in that. Yeah, he definitely didn't. Um, but no, like, you know, it's, you can do things that you can't do in real life. I love the scene when he goes to meet the Oracle. He's talking to the kid, and the kid is explaining how you've been the spoon and why you're not bending the spoon. It's you. It's your mind that's bending. And I was like, oh, this is interesting. Yeah, it's good. No, it's definitely a, a mind freak, but a good in a very good way. It all has to do with just like even Morpheus even says it when he's doing the the jump simulation. He's like, you have to free your mind and you have to be able to look beyond right. your limits because your limit you only we only limit ourselves in our thought process. I can see you now waking up in that <laughs> tube of goo. And having all those, uh, the, all those pipes pop off yeah. your body. Hey, man. And you're like, I told him I wanted this. <laughs> oh, I, it's like coming out of your thing. Yeah, you want to be in the Matrix. 100%. That would be the only reservation. That would be the biggest reservation because it's not the real world. Y yeah. Like, I'm living both in the real world that's really screwed up mm -hmm. and in this false, false world. That would be my only thing. It's like, I don't want to live in the, I don't want to really be there. Right, right. And you can't go back and face it. Yep. Not all atrophied body that's over there. Uh, but you, right. can, you can just, you know. I thought about that too. You can just stay, well, if you're not Neo, just some other random person, you just stay jacked in forever. I'll be the guy who eats the steak. There you and, go. Like, kills his people to get back in. Of course, I wouldn't kill him. I, I don't want to worry about money. I, I want to be a movie star. <laughs> yeah. I know this doesn't taste like steak. Oh, well, mine says it tastes like steak. There you go, man. All right. Mine is a childhood fantasy. Uh, uh, let me. Let me rephrase it, uh, uh, teenage fantasy. <laughs> oh. Because this one is a movie that I saw back in 1991, a little movie by the name of Career Opportunities. Written, a lot of people don't know this, written by John Hughes, who does everything in the 80s, right? John Hughes did uh, The Breakfast Club, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Weird Science. Uh, Home Alone. Sweet six, uh, 16 Candles. Uh, just, he was all over the 80s and early 90s, mm -hmm. right? Well, this film he kind of distanced himself from a bit. Uh, the guy who directed it, directed a lot of stuff, mainly TV, best known for uh, some of the stuff he did with Curb Your Enthusiasm. That's where he's been nominated. But, Love uh, that show. Brian Gordon is his name. He directed this. It stars uh, Jennifer Connelly, and I think her first ever role. Uh, Frank Wiley, I think also his first lead role. Um, Dilbert Mulroney also makes an appearance in this, and John Candy makes an appearance in this mm. movie. But the idea, uh, idea is basically Frank Wiley is uh, a night shift custodian at a Target uh, department store, and he has to work overnights. And um, he finds out, he learns that he gets locked into the Target at nights 
to do his janitorial stuff. He's a teenage kid. And so he's doing some, what you would expect a teenager to do, locked in a Target all night. He's playing around, dressing up and all kind of stuff, rolling, going around the store on roller skates and stuff like that. Well, while he's doing that one night, uh, he doesn't think anybody else is in the store. And then the girl that he likes and just surprises him and is in the store. Like his high school crush. So she got locked in too? She, 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 she uh, was hiding in there. Mm. And she's kind of like a, she's, she's portrayed as like a bad kid. Like she's kind of like goes against the rules type mm-hmm. person. Those promiscuous women. Right. And she doesn't know he's in there. Right. She's doing it just on her own to like mess around. But then, you know, uh, she discovers him, he discovers her, and they basically they spend the night in the Target. And shenanigans happen in there with some thieves that Dylan Mar- D- Dermot Mulroney is in there doing. And, and But the premise of the film, regardless of what happens in the story, the premise of the film is, is this, Mike. What would happen, what, what would you give, <laughs> what would I say, if you were in high school, and you got locked into Target, which is already appealing to me, the idea of getting locked into Target. I know people in, in, on YouTube have done it, and I get themselves locked into Walmart. Yeah, I've seen it too, like. yeah. And now they're getting in trouble for that. I mean, they should be getting in trouble anyway, but they get in trouble for that. Don't do it. But um, but if you could do it legally, and then not only that, but the girl that you're crushing on in high school was in the same, I won't say locked in there too with you, because it sounds a little like uh, kidnappish, but not. <laughs> but not. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, basically, you could go on your first date or a date with your high school crush locked, locked in the target. Locked in a target? It has to be a target? Well, we're going by the premise of the movie. But that part of the movie, yeah, I can't. You, you did say that. Okay. But, I mean, I just, I think it was an appealing thought high to me when crush? I was a kid. Yeah, because they're, just cause they're teenagers in this movie. So, I just, I just made myself a teenager in this movie. What would I... Because there was this girl that I crushed on so hard, and you're talking about me not having a celebrity crush. I had a, my, my entire senior year of high school, I had a crush on this girl, and I would have loved to have been locked into Target with her and just had fun and and maybe sparked a relationship, whatever they were. Those kind of relationships were back in high school. That would, but I would have given everything to do that back then. It would have been awesome. Do you ever do you ever have those crushes and then you see them later and laugh? You're like, "Ooh, I dodged a bullet." Yeah, I've had relationships with people I see that about. Oh, no, thanks. <laughs> oh, but hope, so you're asking me this question. You're presenting me the question. I am. I Think say, about I your high school crush. Yeah. would have been, would have been awesome to yeah, me. Yeah, I would say, yeah. And so, that, so this movie is an idyllic movie to place myself in as a character because I've always thought I would love, one, to just hang out at a Target all night and, two, to do that with your high school crush, mm-hmm. you know, before we all got old and had kids and did all the other stuff. That we don't all have, have kids, but, you know. All, all of mine do, so. <laughs> Actually, wait a second. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Same I'm for pretty me. Sure. I can't, yeah. I'm not, I'm not stalking them all on Facebook or what. Oh, you're not? A little bit. All right. But, I kind of do. But, no, but no, 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 no. But no, uh, <laughs> like, just the idea of going back to that time, putting me in a Target with my high school crush, let's see what happens overnight. <laughs> that sounds so predatory that I'm saying it out loud. But just innocently as you can make it act in this movie. Yeah, your wording sounds real be. criminal. I don't know, man. I know because it is the premise of this movie. That that. What if you say it like this? I get locked into a Target and I stumble up, up, up across my crush. Yeah. That sounds way more innocent than she's in there with me too. Well, maybe that's why they made it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, I guess so. That'd be, right. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the summary of it is you're locked in there, but. Right. If you really needed to get out, you could you could have broke a window. Oh yeah, I'm breaking windows. Yeah, yeah. But, I'm not gonna custodial right. all night. But they they volu- not they pretty much voluntarily just hung out there, mm-hmm. you know. So just just hanging out in the nineties. <laughs> that's what you did in the nineties. Hang out, in, yeah, in the target. Right. That that was that was that was uh, an appealing uh, character. I'd, well, I'd like to try that for a night, not forever. Okay, night. not ten thousand years. You sure? Not that well, you know, you can learn a lot. I'm kidding, no, you are. I guess inside of a target. Not in a target, you do that in one night. Um, next one on my list is uh, going animated. All right. Oh, which, which is something we never like really it. do, yeah. So this is Toy Story. I'd like to be Woody. I almost. <laughs> what? Oh, come on. What? Be mature, Mick. <laughs> I mean, the obvious answer is not Woody. No, you want to be. No, the see, and I almost put Buzz. But then I realized Buzz has that come to Jesus moment where he realizes, oh, I am a toy. You know, he's so in fact that I'm not a toy, I'm a real person. 
And what he proves it to him is like, you're not this real act. You're a toy. Yeah, but Woody, Woody already knows he's a toy. He accepts yeah, his fate, yeah, and yeah. Woody's the leader of the rest of the I toys. Can, you. you don't want to have the realization, but Woody at some point had to have the realization, right? Yeah, but, but you we, just want to be past. When well, we meet him, he's our, he's accepted yeah, everything he is. It. He's already the leader. He's got to break it to the new guy. Hey, you're. You want that responsibility? Yeah. Okay. I think I can handle it. Huh? Yeah, I'm responsible. Huh? No. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not disagreeing. I'm definitely okay, not. Okay. I'm just trying to think of myself in. What would I be? You want to be? Well, I mean, it was either Maybe that. I want to be Woody. It was either going to be Woody or Mr. Potato Head, and he he falls apart. Well, could a be the springy dog, or the. Uh, you get tangled up, you know. Tiner, tiner you know, you never had a you never had a slinky that got tangled up. It's like well, I can't play with this anymore. You yeah, could try to untangle, true. but it's never going to be the same. Well, I mean, I guess the the story of the film is they all get tired of being played with, right? Yeah. 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 But they have each other, you know. So they're never truly alone. I don't. What if? Okay, yeah. All right. I'm with you. I got you. Okay. The, the fear I have, if I had to inject myself into that movie and All I right. wasn't one of those toys, is that would you want to live in a world where toys come into life? Would you like to, be, would you like to live in an Indian in the cupboard type situation? <laughs> that's, now that's a good, greater question because I had some dangerous toys back in the day. Dude, the Small Soldiers. Remember that yeah, movie back yeah. in the day? They, were, they weren't messing around. That's what I'm saying. I had a bunch of G.I. Joes. I had Ninja Turtles. Mm -hmm. I had the, the little cheap dollar fifty bag of 100 army men. No, I'd be dead. My, my toys would kill me. A group of army men would have come in. You'd be like Godzilla. You'd just stomp them all out. I would, no, but if they catch me in my sleep, I'm tied up. They tie me up while I'm asleep. Gulliver's Travels. Th yeah. Thank you. Oh, look hmm. look at that mind working. But yes, I don't want that to happen. And I'm, then they probably gag me. I can't yell out for help. I can't scream for my parents to come That's in. They get enough of them. Yeah. yeah. That'd be tough. I mean, 150? I'm short. I was shorter then. I, yeah. I would argue that there's probably more insects on the planet <clears> than there <throat> are toys. Yes, definitely. You don't think the army men so, can control the ants and ride in like the cavalry? No, I'm just saying back? if we control insects now, yeah, yeah, the toys might just be the same. That's true. Anyway, good, good uh, tangent. Okay, <laughs> uh, this is for my sports lovers out there. This would be a sports lover's dream, and let me explain why. All right. My uh, film that I'd like to be a character in would be Field of Dreams, 1989, Kevin Costner. I wouldn't want to go through any part of the movie except the ending. Now, the ending of the movie is that, I don't know. If, uh, oh, you're cheating. You're I'm just going to pick the end of the movie? Absolutely, because this is the character that I want to be. And the char no, my character doesn't show up to the end of the movie. <laughs> so, if you don't know what the premise of this movie is, 1989, Kevin Costner, Ray Liotta, James Earl Jones. Basically, a farmer has a voice in the cornfield that tells him to build a baseball field. He goes through a lot of things. But ultimately, what this baseball field does, it allows the dead baseball players from the past to come back and play in, in real life. But they can only do so within the bounds of the field itself. But uh, Ray, which is the Iowa farmer that Kevin Costner plays, and his family is able to see these quote-unquote ghosts play games and interact with them and have relationships with them. Uh, as far as what you would with uh, a ghost and a person. And ultimately, uh, Ray's father reappears at the end of the film to really give him the reason why the voice spoke in the first place, to reunite him with his father and to, to reconcile, really, with his father. But at the end, end of the movie is that there's a big line of cars driving up into the, into their driveway to take part in what would be um, the most dream event any sports person could ever imagine which is to watch all of your sports hero come back to life and play in front of you. And I like to be a sports fan on that sideline. That would be my character. But I wouldn't limit it just to baseball. I wrote this. So you're going outside of the premise. Uh, yeah. All but, right. but within, but still within, all right. imagine instead of baseball, just imagine sitting along the sidelines or the court side watching your old sports heroes come back to life or back to their prime, not necessarily dead, uh, and to compete in front of you in their primes. Uh, what if you could see Michael Jordan in his prime and Kobe Bryant in his prime right in front of you? Kobe obviously passed. Michael Jordan's in his 50s. Six, oh, 60 might be now. It's definitely in his 50s. You could answer some of the most uh, leering questions ever in sports history. Like, how would this person in their prime play this person in their prime? You know, how would the GOAT, how would Tom Brady play against Joe Montana? Or... How would, uh, who's the better NBA center? Is it Kareem Abdul-Jabbar? Is it Shaquille O'Neal? Is it Bill Russell? Is it Wilt Chamberlain? You can watch them all play in their primes against each other, right? How about watching, I've never seen Babe Ruth hit a home run. What if you could see Babe Ruth hit a home run, right? 
What have you seen Rain Gretzky or Pele score a goal? Uh, Jim Thorpe, Jesse Owens, watch them participate in the Olympics. What would that be like? The pentathlon, decathlon when they, when, they, when they participate. Watch Muhammad Ali and fight Joe Frazier again or George Foreman in his prime again. Watch Billie Jean King play tennis. You know, he never gets a chance to do that. Watch Jim Brown run for a touchdown. Rest in peace, just passed away recently. Watch Jim Brown run for a touchdown. It would be a sports lover's dream to sit on the sidelines and watch the ghost of the past or even just the primes of the present uh, to, 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 you know, see it all happen again or, or see things you never saw. Right, well, you already you heard that of. out. Right? It would be... I like that, though. It would be insane. And, and look, these are only athletes that are from the 20th century and our current century. Mm -hmm. Who knows how many great athletes ever ha alive have didn't have these games to play, but had the athletic ability to be better than all of these guys we've never even seen before. But in this particular case, bringing back the dead or bringing back people's primes to watch them perform, I just limited it to our own century and, and kind of the, the immediate sports mm -hmm. history that we have. But that was a really I, good answer. That'd be so good. Man. It would be so good to sit there and just watch these people play again. You know, fresh, new, and in new ways. Answer all those questions about who's the best. Is it Jordan? You know, is it is it LeBron? Is it is it Kobe? It would shut a bunch of people up, which I would love. Yeah, would love and then, that. And then just, I mean, I didn't even go back even further. Like George Mikan. I mean, nobody even knows who that is. Who? Is that used to be the center from the uh, Minnesota a basketball? Tall white guy that dominated everybody because he was so tall. Oh, he was the, the plumber, right? I don't know if he was a, I don't know if he was they a plumber. They were all plumbers and electricians back then. <laughs> but he dominated. He was a tall white guy that dominated in the league of white guys, basically, if I remember correctly. Uh, he made, I think he, he played for uh, the Lakers when they were in Minnesota. Mm. I think so. Correct me if I'm wrong. But got guys like that or uh, um, um, Otto Graham. Otto Graham played in the NBA and the NFL. He won championships in the NFL. He, he I think that he nearly went undefeated uh, with the Cleveland Browns when he was there. Mm -hmm. like, people don't know about him. He's, you know, potentially better than Brady, potentially better than Montana. But he just played in the 50s, so nobody knows about him. Or, you know, uh, Vince Lombardi's teams are the 60s. So we don't get to see him. We try to, we try to forget the segregation era days. You know? Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> but there's plenty, there's plenty, there's just so, so many examples of that. Yeah, you're right, you're right. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I mean, even just baseball, too, and, and you know, uh, Satchel Paige, and, I mean, you could go just down the list of, uh, who's the who's the character that Chadwick Boseman played uh, in, in that uh, sports movie? Oh, baseball that movie? was, um... It's the name passing me by right now, but... Yeah, I should know you, it, too. You can watch him play. It'll come back, though, yeah. You know, all those guys that you only hear about, read about, you can actually see them play. It'd be amazing. Robinson, yeah. uh, something Robinson. Jackie, Jackie Robinson. Jackie Robinson, thank you. Excuse yeah. us for forgetting. Uh, yeah, Jackie, you can no, see Jackie no, Robinson no, play. The listeners are going to take my black card for sure. Nah, nah, he's going to do it. All right, uh, I got one more left. I don't know about you. Yeah, you got one more. So go ahead and knock yours out, and then I'll empty my club. I got two. Okay. Uh, this is really easy. Uh, Superman, uh, 1978 movie. Christopher Reeves, uh, Gene Hackman, Margot Kidder, Marlon Brando, directed by Richard Donner. Everybody knows who Superman is. That was the first Superman movie. But I would just basically like to be Superman. That would be great. Um, why would I want to be Superman? Superman is Superman. Obviously, he has superhuman strength, X-ray vision, super hearing, flight. Flight, like I've talked about, Rocketeer. That's way better with Superman because you don't have to strap anything to your back, but you are an alien. Uh, quicker healing factor, invulnerability, enhanced leaping, super speed, super breath. Uh, and, and that's just in the movies. Uh, the comic books, he had super ventric ventriloquism I can't say the word ventriloquism that, thank you he could throw his voice across great distances <laughs> that's so stupid I know <laughs> but it's in the comic books uh, super hypnotism alright this is comic book stuff super stamina he could if he could survive indefinitely without food or water or rest due to the sun's radiation sustaining him right never have to eat never have to drink I don't know about sleep I would assume not have to sleep it's super sleep right it's hibernate <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, I've had a couple super sleep sessions recently. <laughs> um, tactile telekinesis. Tactile telekinesis? I can say that, but I can't say ventriloquism. Oh, um, but, but what is tactile telekinesis? Okay, an attempt was made to explain Superman's ability to fly with large objects through the induction of tactile te 
<laughs> oh, we got telekinesis. It. Sorry, okay. <clears throat> objects that Superman touched were enveloped in an invisible, invisible telekinetic field that allowed him to move with them uh, with the force of his will. So, at the end of Superman Returns, mm-hmm. he's able to lift that entire island up mm-hmm. through telekinesis, tactile telekinesis. It wasn't just super so strength. Being able to touch something, plus his combined might. If the comic book that they were using that. Yeah, to me that's just super strength with what he did. <laughs> yeah, but I think if you thought about the logistics of pushing one pile of dirt up, the surrounding dirt wouldn't necessarily go with you're it. You're right. You're right. You're really, really specific. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Uh, and the, the funniest thing, one of the funniest thing I thought, funniest things that I found that, that in the comic books, the power that he had, and I'll take them all. Why not? If you're going to take one, you can take them all. Uh, fortified blood, which somehow Superman weaponizes. <laughs> And uses his own blood drops, throwing it as fast as a speeding bullet. Dude, stop talking. Dude, so he can bleed bullets, basically, is what they're saying. This is so strange. This is bizarre, yeah, for real. <laughs> well, look, I just wanted to look into all the different superpowers that Superman had, so I can make sure I cover them all. And then it just went down this tangent of all the things he's been able to do in the comic books, too. And I thought it was funny and interesting enough to mention. So. If James Gunn makes the next Superman movie and he can shoot... Bullet blood, come yeah, out. and hypnotize his super. He can super hypnotize Lois. Remember in Superman, I don't remember which movie, but the end of the movie, he pretty much for un- unexplained reasons able to hypnotize Lois into forgetting that as that secret he's identity. Superman, yeah, they don't explain why yeah, how he's able to do that. No, no, boom. It was the it was the the super kiss. He kissed her, remember, and that's what made her. Let, let me add that. The ladies are going to love that on my list. Well, so you're going to kiss her and make no. her forget what happened? That sounds so, like the R word. Kiss so bad. Oh. Kiss, I mean, not so bad, but kiss so good that it makes you lose your memory. <laughs> That's one heck of a kiss. I don't know if you want that because the next time you go in for a kiss, she's going to be like, whoa, and what is are you it, doing? Only, she only, yeah, it was selective memory. So it was, you're right. That is a little Bill Cosby, but <laughs> but it, it, but but it's selective. Like he was able just to say, you forget this little mm-hmm. thing. That is a little weird, but anyway, it was in the movie. And that was a stretch. But look, if you're going to get offered super abilities as Superman, I'll take it. That's fine. Like, how much have you even discovered? I don't know if I use it. How did you even know you have that ability, Superman? See, he was trying to convince somebody that he really needed uh, a a large fry or something. So he just kissed the cashier? No. Oh, yeah, that's true. The cashier's 15. Superman's going to jail. (laughs) I had another thing I can't say. No, I was just to say, if let's say he discovers it on his first kiss, because he doesn't. Okay, know. he would for sure. Yeah. And the yeah. first, and he kisses her, and then she forgets that he she allowed him to kiss her, because she forgot because mm-hmm. of his power, and she slaps him because she finds him on top of her. Whoa! And then what kind of jail repercussions could that lead to? None, because it's Superman. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> Let me ask. Can you Off fly the rails? <laughs> <clears throat> no, oh my gosh! Superman would never do that. There you go. Although I never thought Superman would kill someone either, but the uh, movies have changed that. Here we go. Here, we, here go. we go. All right, last two. What do we got? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and empty the clip here with my last two. Um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I love that movie. Yeah, okay. I, I love movies that portray like 1970s LA, and this movie is like mm. 1973, I, I believe. Uh, Charles Manson and his followers are still alive in this. Fictional. You get stuff. wrecked. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a great movie, though. Uh, Tarantino directed it. It stars Leonardo DiCaprio, Margot Robbie, and Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt plays Leo's stunt double in the movie because Leo was like an aging um, actor. Mm-hmm. And then Margot Robbie plays um, Sharon Tate, who in real life got mur- murdered by Charles Manson's followers. Right. Uh, Austin Butler's one of the followers, actually, in that movie. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, That's good. And there's a guy that plays Bruce Lee in it, and there's a whole controversy with that, which I didn't think was a big deal, but... I didn't either. Hey, to each his own. Yeah. And he didn't apologize for it, and he shouldn't have. No, no, no. It's a fictional... It's a fictional... Yeah. yeah. I mean, the moment that the manager finally didn't get away with what they get away with... Yeah. They get, in real life, you should know this is all fantasy. Right. This is not real. But my the character I would like to be in this movie is uh, Cliff Booth, who plays... It's Brad Pitt's character. He's a stunt want to be him. Yeah. Yeah, he's just... He's a fun character. He has a great time in the movie. He does. Yeah, he's he does. Great. He does a lot of like meandering around LA on his own, and he he actually ends up running into one of the girls on the ranch that was you know lived in by Manson and his yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. 
And it's close. There's a there's a point in the movie where you think maybe this guy dies yeah, yeah, at, yeah. at some point. He puts him in a bad. He didn't know it. He put, gets himself in a bad situation. Yeah, to he take does. On his friend. Yeah, he does. <laughs> but also, uh, he's really the fall guy before the fall guy. You he know is. what I mean? Like he is playing that role, mm-hmm. that stunt man who gets in. You know, that's a that is actually an intriguing movie thought is a stunt man who gets involved in some things where he's got to use those stunt abilities in real life. Well, being that Tarantino's like, and what was that word you used earlier? Auteur? An auteur? Auteur of like film and film history. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't be shocked if he took elements of Lee Major's Fall Guy for Cliff Booth. Yeah. I can see that. Maybe. I don't know. I wouldn't presume. I, it's probably an amalgamation of some characters that he he studied while he was in that movie. Could <laughs> be. Working in that uh, rental uh, movie rental there place. You go. Yeah. But he loves the 70s. I know he, that. He's he all about the 70s. Right. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's based on somebody from the 70s. Which is weird because... And that guy might be what they, 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 they made the television show about the guy that he's actually, you know, uh, really portraying. Oh, now you're doing chicken and egg. See, I don't do chicken and I egg. I think, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, you don't do egg. I, do I, I don't do chicken and egg. You're doing the chicken and egg story. Dude, I love chicken and I love eggs. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> anyway. I think I've seen you consume both. I think we're good. It sounds weird, but all right. Uh, Cliff Booth Legalize. wants to put a time in Hollywood. And to complete the list, our okay. list uh, for this episode, uh, I would love to be Ethan Hunt. And just in Mission Impossible and the, just the franchise in general. Dude, you're running for your life all the time. No, but the guy can do anything. He can do anything. But he's probably the skin of his teeth every time. Hey, that's that's how you stay young. Sure. Is you just barely scooting by every time. Well, Point three it, seconds on the bomb, boom. That's, then, that's, that's a Tuesday for us. But you can't have a real relationship. You try. That's why I go back to before sunrise, and I'll be Jesse too, though. See, so yeah, oh, okay. Or, okay. You know, now we're we're melding movies together. Yeah. All right. Okay. If I decide I want to be Ethan Hunt, well, tomorrow I could just wake up and be, be Jesse for ten thousand years. <laughs> before sunrise for ten thousand years. <laughs> He'd be so really tired of each other after ten thousand years. To merge, <laughs> to merge our list. 10,000 years is what you chose from uh, Groundhog, Day. Groundhog Day. Yeah, I would choose to be Jesse from Before Sunrise. For 10,000 for 10, days, you'll fall in love with this girl. You get to spend 10,000 years with this girl. Dude, you get to experience all the Before Sunset, Sunrise, sun, Sunset, <laughs> the all those side movies, of- <laughs> all in one movie. You wouldn't have to have three movies spanning 30 years. Hey, you man. could have one movie yes. spanning 10,000 years in a day. That's it. And then by the end of it, you're both still the same age and both tired of each other and then see your separate ways up to 10,000 years. That's amazing. There's no way you're still together after 10,000 years, is there? If there was a couple instead of just one person who really experienced a day over and over again, after 10,000 years, you think you'd be you'd come out of it still together? Probably not. I didn't think so either. Because it, eventually... You've done everything. You've because seen everything. Because what before. always happens, the longer you're with somebody, the more little nuances you notice. Like, yeah. oh, I didn't know that she... Wait a minute. See, this is probably her. bad coming from two single guys. This is probably really bad. Is it? Because we have no yeah. ledge to stand that's, on? That's right. Like I said, this is it should be this could be coming from a guy who's been in it for fifty years and like I can spend another fifty. So what it. it what it sounds like then is we need to we need to get a guest who's been with somebody for a while. If you'd like to be a guest on the show. There you go. We'll uh, we'll figure it out. We'll get it worked out. Yeah. We gotta set up for it now for our third yeah, person, so that's true. <laughs> You I'll know be what? very selective about who I would bring. So our previous episode, which was the top 10 movies we were most anticipating, yeah. I actually enjoyed this one more, and I thought it was going to be reverse. I, yeah, you know what? I thought we had this... Uh, and when I initially approached the project of this, I thought it was going to be really hard. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then it got really enjoyable. So yeah. I was happy for it. Good job. I, I felt like I had more Good to job. say, and I actually thought when I made the list, I was going to have nothing to say. But this was more, I preferred this one because this was more of a conversation back and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do your movie, then we talk back and forth, and then I do mine. And there wasn't much with the 2024. Sometimes it just didn't even have a trailer out yet. So there wasn't much. And these are fully, fully released films that have been out for some of these decades Mm -hmm. that we've had a lot of time to think about. For sure. But putting ourselves in it, that was the whole new twist. So I hope you enjoyed it at home as much as we enjoyed to give it to you. I think maybe it's one of our. I think it's one of our best interactions. For sure. I I agree. I think just in general. Yeah. In general. So uh, we hope you feel the same. And I hope that you'll join us again next time we do our top 10 movie podcast with Mike and Molly. Mike Mike and Molly. Sign us out. I got to hit the road. Uh, It's been fun. Um, You know, it's, it's interesting that we can do this for, you know, chunks of time, chunks of of hours at a time. Mm -hmm. And, 
it's fun because it's it's almost like just normal because it's just two two best friends talking about film. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's like, man, it, to talk like it's not easy. <laughs> like when you have to think about what you're gonna say for your movie, yeah. like sometimes I like to just freestyle it. Let me just get the name out there or whatever the topic is, and let me just see what I come up with after. And sometimes that's not easy to do. Yeah. So I can understand why you would have notes. I just try to. I hate taking notes. I hate writing notes. And so sometimes I'll make my list a little lazily, but I guess through hearing you and interacting with you, I get those creative juices flowing. And then it's like, by the second half of my list, <clears throat> second half of my list, yeah. I can go. Well, dude, don't, this is not, don't expect this every time. I, this was just a, uh, I, had a, I had time to do it. Yeah. Most of the time I don't. And so I'm going to have a more of a, a, a low list. Well, when did you, how, but, so how long, how long ago has it been since you've done this list? Like I did this last night, <laughs> right before I came in today. Uh, I did the list when you. F I did a, a primary list. Mm. I, did, I just. Um, I did a. I and I usually do this. Too. Once we come up with the idea, I, I have a, an instant list that just comes to me. I just don't think about what I would think about. Mm -hmm. Then I have a, a kind of a study time where I go through my uh, voodoo library, uh, okay. or I go through my wish list library. Just depending upon what the subject matter is, mm -hmm. to do some some just uh, just mentally see if there's any other movies that I missed or I want to change. Right. And then uh, this, I took another uh, another chance at it because all I had was the, the list. I, I just had the movies themselves. And I wanted to add the stars. I had the time, the stars, and the synopsis, and the director, what they did. That took a little time to research. And then allowed me to flesh some other things out. And then I went a step further, <laughs> and I made a YouTube watch list of all the trailers of all the movies uh, that are on here. Look at you. All and right. I just set it to go. And I just let it all. So that, because I've noticed in some of our past podcasts where I was like, uh, I forgot things that happened yeah. in the movie. Or... It, I misremembered what happened in it, and I wanted these to be as fresh as possible. Mm -hmm. So just before we came here, I watched that for about an hour. That's smart, smart. A little pre-pro, I like it. So that so they'd be fresh on the market. Yeah, be more prepared. Right. Yeah. So you know, that's kind uh, of one of the reasons why I do my list literally leading right up to the day we record because yeah, yeah. it's kind of fresh. Cram it, and then it's right there. Yeah. But this time I had I, I had I found myself with a few hours, so I was like, why not pour a go. little bit into it so that. Try to make it the best that we can. There you go. And, and you guys may or may not care to hear about this, but I think it's important to... Transparency. Yeah, transparency. I always want to be transparent, and I always like to um, you know, just kind of divulge a little personal information just to you know get listeners to really kind of relate. And so it's not just us doing a list. And you do it as well, too. Um, and, I, and I hope that one of my goals is... I can't speak for you, but I think one of my goals for mm -hmm. us doing this is when slash if you know any of these episodes ever get heard that we're turning people on to movies that they haven't seen oh, yeah. or through our you know conversation and our perspectives they look at some of the movies that they have seen and say oh i never thought of it that way or i didn't think about that so the next time they go back and re review it they can look at it kind of through our lens and just have a different experience with the movie they've seen multiple times I'm right there with you so i feel the same way I mean, this is not for us, really. I mean, it's it's we enjoy it. We're, this, we're yeah, fans of film. We've been doing this for years yeah. prior to recording. And this is just recording what we normally do, a little bit more structured. Yeah. That's the thing. I think that, for me, that, that especially with this amount of content that we have that I've written down, that now the struggle is not necessarily doing the work on the, the information itself, but like knowing when to ignore the information and make the podcast entertaining. Right. Nobody wants me to just read my paper. Yeah. So... I want to make sure that I am interjecting some humor and some fun, some personal stories and things like that too. So we'll keep working on it. We'll we keep still, working. We're, we're always we're always a work in progress. Okay. Yeah. Nothing's Just got a, be got a second microphone. Let's there you go. There you go. Thank you for that, by the way. <laughs> you are very welcome, yeah, sir. Yeah. All right. That's uh, that's the end of this podcast. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you reunite with us again uh, on whatever our next uh, top ten lists are going to be and and uh, continue this journey and ride with us. Hope you have a great day. Thanks for listening again. Mike, sign us out. All right, guys. Appreciate you guys for tuning in once again. Remember to stay safe, stay dangerous. 24 is going to get crazy. Hope you guys hang in there with us. Love you guys. See ya.